Hello, goodbye. Good morning. Good morning. We okay, talked the whole night wonderful. through. Good morning. Good morning to you. Give me a sec. Dope. Hello. And welcome to Lore Dump, the show where we take someone who hasn't played a game and walk them through the full story. My name is Monty Zander, I'm your host today, and I'm joined by Neil. Hello. And Chase. Into the asylum! <laughs> <laughs> it's not going on your mic. So it's, did you peek? That, that is a solid block of yellow. That is a, that is a block of cheese there. <laughs> Good. All right, so, yeah, um, as Start Chase... Starting strong. Starting strong. As Chase gave away, uh, we are jumping into the Arkham games. We're beginning with Arkham Asylum. So this is going to cover Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, Arkham Origins, Arkham Blackgate, and Arkham Knight in that order. The date that we're recording this is, full disclosure, it's the 27th of January. In three days, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League goes live. Uh, for people who have the deluxe edition, we are not doing Suicide Squad. Out of curiosity, yes. even though we're not covering it, mm. is it same universe? Yes, it is oh. a sequel to Arkham Knight oh. in, in a lot of ways. Um, same characters, same universe, same everything. It's a continuation. Not same UI. Worst, uh, worst UI. Horrid UI. Not same gameplay either, live service. Um, so yeah, so so, but we're going to be looking at the good games. So we're going to be focusing on these. <laughs> the good games, he says, to a game that isn't even out yet. <laughs> there is one game that people might be going, why aren't you covering this? Which is Arkham VR, um, which is a very short tech demo, virtual reality, where you're Batman and you're doing detective stuff in VR. Monty it's... can't afford a VR headset. No, no, like I've played it. It's great. Does it, does it make you feel like Batman? It does make me feel like Batman. It's, it's good fun. The thing about VR though is that the, the plot of that game is it's a dream that Batman has. And that dream spoils some major stuff that happens in Arkham Knight. So it's kind of like, where would I slot this in? I can't give this to you before we do Knight. And it feels a bit like a wet fart to end the series on a dream that Batman has. So we're just not covering it. You don't Batman. learn anything new. Um, so, yeah. So we're just going to jump straight in with Arkham Asylum. But before we start off, Chase, you're the layman. So <laughs> you don't know anything about <laughs> Arkham. Oh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure if, if how much people have been seeing on either our Discord or, or on other things. I'm not a big superhero person. <laughs> I, I, of course, I know Batman. I've seen, you know, the Christian Bell movies. I saw the new uh, Rob, Rob, Robbie Pat movie. Um, but Deep Lore, nah, I, I Excellent. know, I know yeah. almost nothing. So, okay, so you know Batman's origin story, for example. Depends which version, but yes, basically the, okay. the broad strokes. Do you know Mr. Freeze? I know the character. Do you know anything about him other than just he's cold man? I know he's Arnold Schwarzenegger. Great, fantastic. <laughs> that is Do you know Harley Quinn, Joker? Oh, of course oh, I know oh, Harley oh, Quinn. That's the only important part you need to know. Cool. Okay. Uh, well, I'm actually a little bit gutted then that you know the big twist that Batman is in fact Bruce Wayne all along. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I know. Wait. Who's Bruce Wayne? So for anybody listening along, uh, we have a picture on screen right now. This is, you're going to see these sorts of drawings throughout because in Arkham Asylum, you get like character bios and the drawings are absolutely stunning. So this is how they are portrayed in the menu of the game. Oh. Uh, and a few of them will pop up as we go. They're very, very cool. But um, yeah, other than that, we're just going to kick off. We're going to jump straight to the story. So part one, welcome to the madhouse. And for anyone listening along, um, cutting off just before you start page one, uh, yeah. who was listening to the dates we're recording, yes, it was yesterday that Jurgen Klopp announced that he's leaving uh, as manager of Liverpool Football Club. Okay. R Reds, no, Reds, right. Reds out there, I hear you. Uh, we're all struggling through this together. Uh, it's like our dad's leaving, but I'm sending you my love. We'll get through this together, okay? Never walk alone. I'm not a football person either, so I've got no clue to you. No more football, only Batman. So the year is 2009, and out of nowhere, a little-known studio called Rocksteady released the ultimate Batman fantasy Arkham Asylum. So, fun fact about this, the only reason this franchise exists is because Pandemic Studios were working on a Dark Knight game to tie in with the movie, and it was bad. It it's was, not awful. It's bad. It's bad by <laughs> comparison. Yes, yeah. It's a and, movie tie-in game. Um, so, Rocksteady made the game is 2009. It's evening in Gotham City. Rain pours, lightning crackles, and the bat signal shoots into the sky. Pretty sure that statue is in Rapture. Uh, yeah, it, it does look a little bit Bioshock, yeah. So it shoots into, well, I mean, a lot of the, um, you'll, you'll, you'll note that there's a lot of Gothic architecture in Gotham, no duh, but it's, it's always kind of contrasted by Art Deco to show the, the class divide. The rich people have their Art Deco buildings, and your Gothic kind of run-down buildings are often given over to... Uh, yeah. These are, these are like, turn-of-the-century families have been 
bridge yeah. for a, a long time. So the bat signal shoots into the sky, warning superstitious and cowardly criminals that the Batman is out on the hunt. We see the Batmobile race through the storm, escorted by Gotham City Police. Inside the Batmobile is Batman. Voiced by Kevin Conroy from the animated series. The best Batman. The best Batman. Uh, rest in peace, Kevin Conroy has passed away. Uh, you're going to see us a lot. They brought back a lot of the voice actors from the animated series, as well as Bruce Tim, one of the lead writers and creators. This... Mark Hamill! Oh, you, you do know. You Excellent. Do know. Oh, of course I know that they, voice. They, they, yeah, they obviously, they, for a lot of people our age, the sort of quintessential Batman and Joker, mm -hmm. they did a lot of the media, the animated films, the animated shows, the games, and Mark Hamill has said he would only do stuff if Kevin Conroy was in it. And, and has said that he won't do Joker again because yes. he won't be he won't be opposite funny. his Batman. Actually, if this is the Batman opposite Joker, I do know this Batman's voice as well then. Yeah. Anyway, so the Joker is also in the Batmobile, voiced by Mark Hamill. Um, he sits next to Batman, dazedly giggling. It's just another night. Joker started a riot in Blackgate Prison, took the mayor hostage, and Batman stopped him. Good stuff. Uh, there's a little bit of debate about this among the fan base, but generally, it seems that Batman has been doing this for about 11 or 12 years. He's alleged among your low-level criminals, but a lot of his rogues are established. So Penguin, Two-Face, they're all out there by now. Um, he's gone through some of the big beats of his classic comic book story. For example, Barbara Gordon, aka Batgirl, has been shot and paralyzed by the Joker. Jason Todd, the second Robin, has been killed. And the first Robin, Dick Grayson, has turned into Nightwing. Don't worry about it, but just to give you a sense that these are some major beats in his canon and they've all happened by this point. Yeah, they're sort of the Doctor Who fix point in times in most, in most mm. Batman uh, kind of main universe stories, these things always have happened. Yeah. Surprised that you went Doctor Who and not Spider Verse? Well, Doctor Who's. I mean, love Spider Verse, Kenny but you know. Keep, gotta keep with the superheroes. So, tonight, Batman is taking Joker to Arkham Asylum, an institution for the criminally insane. As we arrive, Batman marches Joker down a long metal corridor leading to the intensive treatment facility. Metal reinforcements and steel are bolted onto the ancient Gothic architecture. The guards are all wearing body armor, armed with automatic rifles. Whilst this isn't a very nice asylum, I can at least appreciate that it seems that the town of Arkham um, likes to... The town of Arkham? The, the town of Arkham <laughs> likes to prioritize rehabilitation over simply imprisonment. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Putting him in an asylum. Let's, let's put a pin in that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, to be clear, Chase, uh, so Arkham Asylum sits on an island. Like, there's a, there's Gotham City, then there's a bridge that takes you to the asylum. The asylum exists in Gotham. It's not Arkham. No, no, it's yeah. right. No, it's but bordered it's... by the town of Arkham. <laughs> but, but they have doctors there. They have psychiatrists that yeah. only occasionally become psychotic harlequins. Sometimes. Um, so at the end of this long tunnel, as we bring Joker forwards, is this man, Warden Quincy Sharp, who glares at the Joker as he absently wanders in front of Batman. Hey, Sharpy, Joker giggles. Love what you've done with the place. That's Warden Sharp to you, Sharp says. He turns his head to a nearby security guard with a glass eye. Bowles, take him. Frank Bowles, one of the chief guards, grabs Joker by the collar. Frankie, Joker chuckles. How's the wife and kids? You miss me? But Bowles cuts him off. Shut it, clown. There's a lot of people here who want to talk to you. The security team strap Joker into a standing gurney so they can wheel him down the hallway. Every single person in this room is on edge, but the Joker just keeps giggling. He's, he's looking like very dapper. He is looking dapper. This is a cracking outfit and a look for him. He's, he's looking very clean, very good. Well, he, he's a bit dirty, a bit dingy. Yeah, he's had a bit of a fisticuff with Batman tonight, oh, but he's man. generally got a quite, a, quite a solid look going on. He's... He's going to look a lot worse as the series continues. The main issue I don't like is, what's up with his chin? Why is it so long? Oh, yeah, that's... Uh, that is uh, always bothering me. You get a lot of pointy picture. chins in, in, in the mm. in the comic book Jokers. Also, his poor hairline. Yeah, that's like... Yeah, yeah, it's a step beyond a widow's peak, isn't it? That's what my hairline would... It's very Vegeta, isn't it, from Dragon Ball? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very Vegeta. Um, so, yeah, so, so they start strapping him in, and Joker's like, Careful, boys, you'll crease the suit! Sharp growls at him and he goes, Get that filthy degenerate out of here! But Batman stops him. Warden, something's not right. I'm going with him. So we get our long walk as parts of the asylum are introduced to us, accompanied by commentary by Joker and Warden Sharp. A recording of Sharp echoes over the speakers, telling us a little more about the asylum for people like you, Chase, who haven't read the comics. Uh, so <laughs> Sharp is straight all above line. board. <laughs> all above board. This is the best institution in the world. Hello, new patient, he says. 
Almost a century ago, Amadeus Arkham transformed his ancestral mansion into this fine institution for the criminally insane. What a nice man. Does he frequently monologue this to the workers who have assumedly know all this already? It's, it's, it's for new, it's, it's for patience. new patients. But it's a bit... Hasn't the Joker been here like 10 times? That is also probably true, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Joker is babbling along um, over this tannoy, basically. He's ignoring Sharp and he goes, look at all this new security. How's a guy supposed to break out of here? Sharpie just loves his cameras. Make sure you get my good side. Uh, I'm just joking. It's always nice to return to my little hacienda. <laughs> Sharp's like, I want him put away securely this time. Another breakout and I'll lose support for my mayoral campaign. Shoot to kill permissions granted. <laughs> wow, really playing your cards close to your chest there, Sharpie. Wow. Wow, no conflict here at all. So we enter a quarantine chamber where a machine scans Joker for weapons and he's like, you know what? I miss the good old days of a good old cavity search. Much more personal. Amen, Joker. Amen. <laughs> Immediately, the lights go red. Multiple prohibited items. Oh no, but one of the guards points out that no, the scan is green on Joker. It's Batman's gadgets that are setting off the alarm. <laughs> Um, and Joker's like, oh, what have you got stuffed up there, bats? Come on, tell me, tell me. Batarangs? Ooh, bat claws? <gasps> bat snacks? A doctor... <laughs> yeah, he's, he's an absolute riot. He's so good. He's so well written in this. Um, a doctor nudges past Frank Bowles with a clipboard. Just checking your patient, he mumbles. Make it quick, Bowles gnashes. Need to take my temperature? I'd be happy to drop my pants, Joker grins. This Joker just really wants his hole touched. This Joker is in love with Batman. Like, the game doesn't pretend. This, this I'm sorry to say, this Joker so far has kind of chased Lord Dump energy. <laughs> <laughs> We're just both... Whores. <laughs> so Aaron Cash, and annoyingly I don't have a picture of him. Um, Aaron Cash is he's a big grizzled bear of a man, um, and he's got he's got a hook on his hand. Um, you, you'll bump into so. him a few times. He's not a major majorly important character. I just kind of, I'm quite fond of Aaron Cash. He's just a tiny side character. But he's great. I don't remember Aaron Cash. So he's the head of Arkham Security. And he's calmly ordering his men around as we exit the chamber. Um, he's holding an automatic rifle, but we see that one of his hands is missing, replaced by a prosthetic hook. I want eyes on him at all times. Nobody let him out of your sight, he says. Oh, there'll be time for you soon, Cash, Joker leers. And speaking of time, tick tock, tick tock. What's that I hear? A huge industrial elevator opens its doors at the end of the corridor. There's a rumbling and a groaning as the elevator tries to contain the weight of whatever's inside it. And before we see him, Joker shouts out, Crackle boy! Is that you? Holy Swamp Gator, Batman! Waylon Jones, <laughs> <laughs> Waylon Jones, aka Killer please, Croc. Please tell me that we're getting a cheesy Robin in any of these games. I thought you would be more happy about the fact that there's a character called Killer Croc. Yes. <laughs> I've seen Suicide Squad. Oh, right. I, okay. know yeah, Killer Croc. Okay. I know Killer Croc. I'm un unenthused. Big this lizard is, man. This is good Killer Croc, though. Suicide Squad's a shit. It's just a man, like a, a regular-sized man with sharp teeth. This is this is a, a, a human crocodile man thing. Uh, he's humongous. Um, so, yeah, he steps out of the elevator. Chains and cuffs are bolted around his an ankles and wrists. A shock collar sits around his massive neck. As he stands to his full height, we see he towers over Batman, who is about 6'2", um, and he's easily 8 feet tall. He's the one that chewed off Aaron Cash's hand years ago. He's the <laughs> Reason why, yeah, he's the reason why Cash has the. the hook. I feel like I feel like these chains aren't doing much. He could probably just sit on you and do more damage. He could, but the shot collar is very effective. Um, oh. We do see eventually points where a lot of the inmates have shot collars, and they're very good for neutralizing. So yeah, uh, so he sniffs the air. And he goes, "I've got your scent, Batman. I will hunt you down." The guards then shock him and he reels back in pain and he goes, A toy collar won't stop me from killing you, Batman. And as the guards move on, we hear him growling, I'll rip you apart, eat your bones. So uh, yeah, into the lift we go, descending into the basement. Um, Wee, Joker says, a great night for a party, don't you think? Not where you're going, Batman rumbles. Though the night is young, Bats, I still have a trick or two up my sleeve. I mean, don't you think it's funny how Blackgate Prison has burnt down and now all of my crew has been moved here? I thought I told you to stay quiet, Frank Bowles hisses, leveling his gun on him. That's true, that doesn't seem very smart. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Joker just kind of like looks at him, he's unfazed, and he just goes, Oh, Frankie, you really should learn to keep that fat mouth shut. It could get you into trouble. <laughs> You've never let me catch you this easily, Batman says. 
What are you really after? Oh, not much. Hundreds dying in pain and fear. All their meaningless lives brought to a horrifying conclusion. All thanks to you and a book of matches. So, they take Joker through a laser gate and it locks behind them. Commissioner Gordon enters and pulls Batman to one side as they process Joker. He's been here waiting. Long night, Jim. Batman musters a small smile for his friend. <laughs> Jim laughs. Joker invades City Hall, takes the mayor hostage, and leaves me to juggle SWAT teams, the media, and you. Yeah, it's been a hell of a night. In the background, uh, we see that Frank Bowles is so stressed that he's swigging from a hip flask. <laughs> Just openly drinking on the job. Oh, I, I did notice that earlier that it was on the back of his <laughs> yeah, thing. No, no, Almost like standard issue. Constantly drinking. Not even hiding it anymore. That's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Batman uh, is like, hopefully the last one we'll ever have with him, gesturing to the Joker. And he and Jim enter a control room and watch Joker through a window as he's being processed. He surrendered almost without a fight. I don't like it. And just as Batman finishes that sentence, Joker makes his move. Separated from Batman and with just two guards in the room, he headbutts one of them, craps him to the floor, and chokes the other out with his handcuffs. The choke's on you, he sneers at the dead guard. Um, Batman starts, so he, people just die in this game. I want to point this out. This isn't people get knocked out. People die. People get killed all the time. Um, this guy's dead. But that's so violent. I know, right? <laughs> it's so dark. Ooh. So Batman starts to try and like break through the window of the control room to reach him as Joker dances around the room in a frenzy. And it's like, hoo 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 hee hee. And then he goes, honey, I'm home. And he points to one of the security cameras. We cut to the security room where we see the outline of Harley Quinn watching him on the cameras. Yeah. Come on in, she says, and swipes a security card. Queen. Whoosh. Suddenly every cell... I, I apologize so much in advance for the fact I'm going to be very horny through this entire... <sighs> the, the, game... the games are also incredibly... You back me up on this, Neil. The games are also incredibly horny. Uh, Thank God. Yeah, for, I'm for, so for ready. Stretches. Um, if for some reason you want to hear more of this, uh, please subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, we're moving on. So, um, suddenly every cell in the facility opens, Batman bursts through, and Harley Quinn's like, come on in! Um, Batman gets through the glass, but as he re reaches the floor, Joker races behind a laser shield as it activates, separating the two of them. It, obviously this has to happen. It's the premise for the game. It, they, these sort of brand new security measures at Arkham have immediately failed. Yep. Like yep. the second they didn't have the world's greatest fighter man next to them, it immediately all fell apart. Is that is, is the not the world's greatest detective? The world's greatest fighter not, is, man. Is that not, is, is Batman meant yeah. to be a detective? Yeah. Batman's detective. title is the world's greatest detective. Yeah. What? Some yeah. of his some of his villains just call him detective. Yes. Yeah. yeah they do. You'll see him next. Solves, time. solves crimes. Yeah, solves crimes all the time. No, he doesn't. He just punches people. You watched the Batman, Robert Pattinson's Batman. He solves crimes all the time. He was I'm moody not... and punched people. Well, yeah, he's that as well. I feel like that does that movie a severe dis uh, injustice. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I, I do adore that movie. That movie is really good. But The laser gate separates them and Joker spreads his arms wide and he goes, Welcome to the madhouse, Batman. I set a trap and you sprang it gloriously. Let's get this party started. He looks to the open cells where inmates are exiting. Ladies and maniacs, I apologize for this interruption to your regular entertainment, but you know how I do love a captive audience. I'm in control of the asylum now. If you think I'll let you run, Batman starts, but Joker cuts him off and goes, blah, 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 always with the hero speak. Oh, I'm getting bored just watching you. Why don't you just come find me? He races further into the asylum, and after a few minutes and some punching bad guys later, we follow. You know it's a trap, Jim Gordon says over the intercom. Of course it is, Batman mutters, but follows Joker anyway. Oracle, can you hear me? So we never get to see Oracle in this game, but this is her art. And uh, this is Barbara Gordon, Oracle, she used to be Batgirl. After the Joker oh. shot her... Jim Gordon's son, if you didn't... Daughter. That. Daughter, sorry, if you didn't make that connection. Yes, Jim Gordon's daughter. Jim does not know that she works for Batman. Um, and she's his lady in the chair now. She does all the tech and stuff for him. Nice. Yeah, so she calls in Batman and she goes, Loud and clear, is my dad okay? Commissioner Gordon is safe, Batman says. Joker's not far ahead. I'll stay in contact. As we fight on to reach Joker, we see bodies littering the halls. Joker and his crew have already sown carnage throughout the asylum. Guards and doctors are dead. The ones that are still alive have been locked away. So, we save some folks, fight some folks, and I'm generally going to skip all that stuff, but there's a few fun moments where some familiar faces from the comics appear that are worth flagging. 
Um, really, a lot of this is one big excuse just to be like, remember this Batman villain? Remember this Batman villain? It's all fun. It's all. Are they here just to say remember them, or are they here because they will become? Depends. It depends. Some of them, yes. Some of them, no. Um, for example, this guy, not important, but he's, he's an interesting villain, so that's why I'm point, pointing him out. Um, so, in electroshock therapy, an inmate by the name of Victor Zaz holds a guard hostage. The guard is strapped to the electroshock chair, and Zaz has the switch. Zaz is bald. His prison, ju prison jumpsuit has been cut away, revealing him to be topless for some reason. He's a minor Batman villain from the comics. He's a serial killer where after every kill, he slices a tally into his skin. He has a compulsive yeah. need to kill others, and he's saving a very special spot for Batman. Um, I, I just don't ask where that spot is, I don't know. I just want to say, um, uh, yeah, obviously Victor Zaz, horrifying murderer, um, one of the kind of creepier Batman characters. Mm. But, you know, in terms of strop it, strapping this uh, prison guard into the electric shock, electroshock chair that presumably the inmates have been, uh, you know, yeah. forced to sit in, more power to you. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. yeah. Revolution in the asylum! <laughs> um, that's basically all that's happening here. They're just revolting under Joker's lead. Um, so Zaz is holding the switch and the guard's lying there and he goes, I see anything that looks even a little bit like a bat and this guard dies. Do you hear me? He zaps the guard, not enough to kill him, just to hurt him. Oh, listen to the pig when I shock him, he laughs. Anyway, Batman flies in, knocks him out, moves on, easy peasy. Uh, the next villain we meet is Harley Quinn. Yes. So she speaks to Batman from one of the television screens littered throughout the asylum. Our villains will regularly pop up in these screens and monologue and chat while we explore and stuff. Um, her blonde pigtails and black mask are still here, but she's not we wearing the classic Harlequin jumpsuit she's known for. This time... What's she wearing, Chase? Oh, she's got like a dope corset, puffy top, uh, mini skirt, some thigh fishnet thigh-high socks, thigh-high boots. It's she's great. It's a nurse's outfit. It's great. She's even got a little Is hat. It? Yeah, it's supposed to be a nurse's outfit, yeah. Uh, but she's even got the little hat. I do see it now. <laughs> I love it. She pops up on the screen. She's like, Hiya, B-Man. How'd you like my new uniform? Pretty hot, huh? I got something to show you. She wheels the desk chair into shot, and we see that Wh Warden Quincy Sharp is bound and gagged to the chair. He's clearly that's, terrified. That's probably fine. He, he wasn't a great guy. Well, you know, he's still the warden. What do you mean? Um, he's running this wonderful, rehabilitation nice rehabilitation center. center. <laughs> you're yeah. Right, you're, uh, excuse yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. So Harley's like, ta-da, I'm now subbing for the old man. Old Sharpie's never been happier. In case you ain't figured it out, today's the Joker's big homecoming, and you're the guest of honor. You have one chance to surrender, Quinn, Batman says. Tempting bats, but no dice. Now the inmates are running the asylum. Well, technically Joker's goons shipped in from Blackgate, but you get the idea. Bye-bye for now. And she cuts off the broadcast by smashing the camera in her office. Where do you think, that, where do you think super villains get the money to pay their goons? Uh, jo oh, bank robberies, all sorts. I mean, Joker, Joker leads through fear, mainly. He brings yeah. people in off the streets, gives them clown it makeup, depends, and is like, so, "I'll kill your family." It's, it's become a it's become a an actual plot point in comics uh, <laughs> recently with the Joker. With it seems like there's whoever's writing a character right, they're very different. Mm. But depending on who's writing the Joker, bank robberies are a big part of it. Organized crime is often a part of it. Yeah. But in it's become more fa it became more fashionable, I think, over the last sort of twenty twenty five years to just focus on the. Uh, the complete unhinged insanity and yeah. um, nihilism. My my favorite Joker stories are less when he's uh, like leading a gang and more when he is just a serial killer, just messing with Batman in some way. They're my they're my favorite stories. But there's different ways you could do the Joker. Um, in fact, there's a whole story where there's three Jokers. Turns yeah. out there were three Jokers all along, but we're not getting into it. It's not relevant to this. It's stupid and shit and bad. Um, anyway, moving on. <laughs> so <laughs> it's three different Jokers yeah. um, to try and explain like how over the like past what eight years of comics, Joker's character has just been. Like, like a completely different guy every every issue. Don't worry about it. Sure. <laughs> so Harley Quinn cuts the camera. Oracle, Barbara Gordon, calls us up and is like, Batman, not only is Joker taken over the asylum, but he's placed bombs all over Gotham. He says he'll detonate them if anyone else sets foot on Arkham Island. He's lying, Batman says. It's just a diversion to keep everyone away. And Oracle's like, how do you know? And he goes, I know him. And then he hangs up. Uh, so onwards through the asylum we go, eventually reaching Joker. So it's a large chamber with a huge metal container hanging over a long drop. Joker stands on top of the container, calmly holding onto a chain. What took you so long? <laughs> Batman pulls out a batarang and throws it at him immediately, but Joker dodges it with ease. 
There's no escape, Joker. I will find you. Oh, I'm planning on it, just not yet. He kicks open the door of the container and it bursts open to reveal a monster. A huge, mutated man with glowing green eyes. His bones are starting to pierce through the back of his skin and he roars manically. We learn through fighting the creature that Batman has never seen this before. This is not a rogue that we recognize. Whatever this is, it's something new. We don't quite beat it, it's very strong. Instead, halfway through the fight, the monster just spasms and we hear his heart just beating, beating, beating and then it collapses to the floor. <laughs> it just dies. Joker's he like, got death noted. He got death noted. Joker's like, well, that was expected. And he's still hanging on to the container and he says, note to self, need stronger test subjects. And then he looks to Bats and he goes, well, seeing as I'm feeling generous, I'll give you this one for free. He lets go of the chain at risk of following. Knock me off, I dare you. End this, pull the plug, stop me once and for all. Batman pulls out a batarang, thinks about it, thinks about all the death that he could prevent if he just finally, finally put the clown prince of crime in the ground, but he can't do it. He can't kill. Because he loves him. Just, just, just no killing rule, innit? Couldn't he have just, like, thrown it into his leg? Yeah, probably. Gone up and got him. <laughs> they were fi Look, he's got his grapple on him. Yeah. Just gr grapple Joker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. His leg, pull him 50 down. things there he could go. be doing. <laughs> <laughs> Night over, game finished, yeah. 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 He's got like sonic grenades on him probably and like just throw that up there just yeah. as as batman puts the batarang back in his utility belt joker loses it he's, he laughs so hard that he almost falls off anyway the container starts to pull away taking him deeper into the asylum and far away from us you're getting so predictable bats i'd love to stay in chat but i've got a party to organize i've got guests coming in from all over arkham you'll see sometime later as we follow he pops up again on the screens just to just a mock us, really. He does this a lot. He just he just likes the sound of his own voice, just likes to babble. Uh, Batman's like, there's no escape for the second time so far. And Joker's like, I don't want to escape. I'm having way too much fun. I've even got you here to put a smile on my face. But oh, I forgot to say, just in case you thought of following me, I've arranged a little insurance. We see some security feeds from elsewhere in the asylum. Frank Bowles knocks Jim Gordon out and starts to move his body. So the guy that was what? drinking on shift, he's now taking the commissioner hostage. Why? Bowles! Batman gasps, and Joker's like, That's right! Gordon's on his way to Harley as we speak. If I see you trying to follow me, he dies. Harley's looking forward to it. Maybe I'll film it and post it on the internet. For the first time, we hear... Not fear, but concern in Batman's voice. He's been stoic up until now, but knowing his friend is in danger, he's starting to worry. He decides to head to the office where Bowles attacked Gordon. Maybe he's left something behind we can use to follow him. So yeah, what he finds here is the brand of adult juice that Bowles was drinking from earlier. Spilt on the floor. Using his scanner- Cum? No. <laughs> Whiskey. <laughs> where did you see that? It's because it's white. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh god. Yeah. I mean, one, we said two, the game was horny, but nobody's drinking god. <laughs> it's it's only 99.92% whiskey. What's the other 0 0.08? I've just had breakfast. This is early. Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> so long story short, Batman detectives it, right? And he follows the cum and then he gets he gets to <laughs> He gets to where Frank Bowles is, uh, and when we reach him, he's too late. Frank Bowles is dead. Oh. Green paint is sprayed over his mouth in the shape of a smile. Dead end is scrawled to a sign pinned to his chest. But it's not the end of the world. Presumably, Jim Gordon has been taken through the door behind him, but <gasps> gasp, it's locked. Damn it. Gasp. Well, luckily, someone other than Joker and Harley is watching us through the Arkham security system. Can you hear me, Batman? Edward Nigma, aka the Riddler, purrs over our comms. Wow. <laughs> this is the proper Riddler, not that moody, politically conscious wannabe <laughs> in the in the slightly too long and dreary recent Batman movie. This is this is the Riddler. I he's fun and mischievous. He is fun and mischievous. I loved New Riddler, but also yes. Yeah, I also love Paul Dino's yeah, Riddler, but I this is fun. 
I just think he should have been a new villain. Yeah. No, I, I, I think, think it was. Might have made him the Riddler. I think it was a clever idea of t- taking it a different direction. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So Riddler's here, everybody. Uh, again, this is the art that you get in the game. We will never see Riddler in this game. Uh, so this is why I'm putting him on screen. This is how he looks. He's got his. Well, do you want to describe it, Chase? What's his outfit like? Uh, he looks like the Onceler. <laughs> what's wow. the one? What's the one? Going back some old school Tumblr time there. If anyone knows, if you oh, yeah, if you know, you know. He's he's given Tumblr sexy man. He is in a a long, tight, latex looking green suit, um, with the nice big coattails, some lovely purple uh leather gloves, uh purple lining on the coat, purple shoes, purple tie with his question mark. I am bummed there's not one of his designs where his suits just covered in question marks. Oh, like a Jim Carrey kind of... Yeah, that'd be great. Um, And a stupid, stupid looking superhero mask. Yeah, he's great. I love him. I love this Riddler so much. Um, So he purrs over our comms. He's the one that's locked the door. Uh, And he's like, Yes, it is I, the Riddler, your intellectual superior. My genius has allowed me to easily hack into your primitive communications. My goal is simple. You complete a series of amusingly taxing challenges, and well, you'll see. Is that the one slur? There's a picture of the one slur being pulled up by Chase now for for Monty to see. I absolutely see it. <laughs> yeah. Well, this came out before, presumably. I think the the Lorax was what probably after this, but I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, we never get to see the Riddler in Arkham Asylum, but he is infamous. If you ask anybody who loves these games, they'll they'll roll their eyes. And go, oh, this fucking guy. Like, I'm assuming as we go through all these games, it is going to be our classic Joker, Riddler, Penguin. Two face. You you'll be shocked how many villains you're going to meet across this franchise. The the series is stuffed with them. But Riddler is a, always a key side quest yeah. in every game. I'm trying to remember because I I do have at least vague knowledge just from <clears throat> osmosis for this specific game. Mm-hmm. I cannot remember if the Joker dies at the end of this game. Joker doesn't die in the Arkham games. Does he not? No. Why do you think that? Uh, because I've seen his final boss from one of them. The one that people don't like. Okay. I think I know which I one you're talking, you're talking about. And I, I think, you're, I talk, have, I think you're, you're talking about this game. I have no that. clue which game it's from, and I don't know the context surrounding it. I have just seen the boss fight, and that people don't like he's, it. He's a big boy. In the... He's a big boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know, I know what you're talking about. about. This game. You're thinking, I'll spoil, spoil it now. You're thinking about this game, and no, the Joker doesn't die. <laughs> oh, I thought he died. It's a Batman no, no, game. No, the Joker doesn't see, die. I, can, I, mean, I can see I can see where they think that. Yeah, yeah. I, um, yeah, Riddler's, I believe Riddler's one of the super villains I was going to refer to earlier that call Batman detective. Because oh, it's yes. and, and the whole thing with Riddler, as Monty just quoted there, is I'm your you know Batman. Just depending on who's writing him, is just the smartest as as smart as could possibly be needed for any situation. Yeah. And Riddler considers himself to be a superior. Yeah. So so is the Joker our through line through all the games? Is it not? I'm not telling you anything. Okay. What I will say is that there's when when we finish Arkham Knight, you will be able to look back on the franchise and go, yeah, this is one big story, um, okay. in a really nice way, in a really really. Some people don't like Knight. I think Knight's quite got really satisfying. I really, like Knight. I really like Knight. Interesting. Interesting. Um, interesting. But yeah, anyway, so so yeah, Riddler calls us up and it's like, I've locked the door. Haha, I'm smarter than you, dickhead. Um, so we never really get to see him in this game. We will get to see him in future games. Um, he's just a mischievous scamp. He is our collectathon in this game. So there are trophies to collect in the form of green question marks of course um, that he has planted through the vents and the ducts, which means that Riddler has spent his time. When like, he did this, through. I don't know. <laughs> um He's uh, he must have like injured himself on some of the traps at some point. Just yeah. done as like ah shit, I burnt my foot. I I love so how annoying. I love how annoying. dedicated villains like him are just to the art of villainy. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. they're, they're, they're really yeah. willing to put the time it's in. Commitment to the drama, commitment to the bit. There's there's an incredible storyline. Uh, Tom Kane's Batman comics. Just quick shout out. Um, where which is called the the, the Joker War. Um, not the Joker War. Yeah, it's it's, uh, the, it's the, the the war, war of, of jokes, jokes and riddles, riddles yeah. which is where Joker and Riddler go to war over who's oh. going to control Gotham. And the whole thing, like the through line, is just like who's better, Joker or Riddler. It's fucking it's amazing. Good. It's such yeah. a good storyline. Um, but anyway, we also find a bunch of riddles that we need to solve, which basically show us off like Easter eggs, stuff like that. For example, in Arkham Asylum, we can find like Catwoman's whip. Uh, and there's a riddle, and you find it, and you scan it, and you go, oh, that's fun, all that sort of thing. Is Catwoman in these games? Catwoman is in this franchise, yeah. 
Um, the beauty of his inclusion is that he's so annoying and some of his riddles are legitimately quite tricky so the player grows to see him as like a real villain who is bothering them, not just bothering that Batman. Um, but there isn't much story stuff to really walk you through in this game, but I do need to introduce him. Is he is he doing anything particularly villainous or is he just being a little prick? In this game, it's mostly just being a little prick. A little <laughs> he's like, find my riddles! And Batman's like, I'm busy trying to stop the Joker and he's like, nah, I've locked down this door. Like, yeah. that's, that's it. Um, and it is legitimately hard work to collect them all it's just and most of it isn't hard it's just annoying i don't think i've ever i think i probably only uh platinumed uh like uh asylum when i was younger because the city what the city games are just such such a pain to find all these origins in particular is a drag to do all the riddler stuff but regardless so to give you the full experience of this I'm going to try and emulate how the Riddler is included in this because you should hate the Riddler. So uh, I've got some riddles for you. Oh, let's go! I'm going to be so bad at this. Let's go. So, riddle me this. If you have me, you will want to share me. If you share me, you will no longer have me. What am I? A Diet Coke. Nope. Uh, The riddle is on screen if you're wanting to play along at home. I, re- I refuse to progress until you've solved this, by the way. <laughs> um, have me, you will want to share me. I've picked pretty classic riddles here that you might have heard before, just to help you out. Share me, no longer. I'm going to be cutting out all the awkward silences, don't worry. Okay, um... <laughs> I hope you know this is affecting our recording schedule, but, you know... You're alright, if you guys do get legitimately stuck, I might just cut these, but I think... I think this is fun. Yeah. If you share me, you will no longer have me, so it's like, uh, it's, uh, uh... If you have me, you will want to share me. But if you share me, you'll no longer have me. What am I? Have you had a second coffee yet? No. Um... <laughs> There's gonna be people listening along going like, It's this! <laughs> I'm infuriated, because I'm, I'm infuriated. I'm absolutely gonna think. Mm-hmm that it's obvious when I hear it. Um, I, I will, I, I'm, I'm only teasing, by the way. I will give you the answer if it takes oh. you too long. Uh, but I do want you to- is it, a fe- is it a feeling? It's not a physical object that you can hold in your hand. Yeah. I'll give you that. It's not yeah. a physical object. Um, but it is a noun, technically. Love. No, because why would you no longer have it then? You've kind of, you're on the right track. Uh, um, thinking about that sort of, uh, like, intangible. Oh, a secret. Uh, a secret. Yay! Well done, Neil. Well Very done. good. Ha! The Riddler barks down the radio. I hope you know you're solving all of these kind of <laughs> shit at riddles. I am the world's greatest detective. <laughs> it only took me two and a half minutes to think of the first answer. So, uh, yeah, they do get harder. Um, oops, sorry. Uh, I might cut a couple as we go. We'll see how we feel. Not, the hard, not like the hardest riddle ever. Bilbo Baggins' is infamous what's in my pocket. <laughs> Load of shit, by the way, Bilbo. Gollum should have called him on that. Yeah, it's not Absolute real. Absolute nonsense. Can, can, can we give Neil the, the Riddler Monty head? So the Riddler barks down the radio when Batman solves his first riddle. Um, this isn't one of the ones he gives you. They're always like in-universe riddles, but I've ma- not made them in-universe or else you wouldn't be able to solve them, Chase. So, uh, yeah, and he goes, well, of course you got that one. That one was easy. Uh, so anyway, Bat exits ex- intensive treatment, coming into the main island. So pretty. With all of our introductions out of the way, we pick, pick up on the radio that Gotham City's number two reporter, Jack Ryder, is reporting on the asylum takeover. It seems Joker's been in control for just a couple of hours now, and news has already reached Gotham City. But what exactly is Joker planning? Well, before we get to all of that, I've got something else to show you. While we explore the asylum, Batman will find interview tapes documenting patient sessions of a bunch of his villains and showing what their life has been like in the asylum. I'm not going to show you all of these or else this episode is going to be like a million years long, but I am going to do each character, a couple of the interview tapes for each character we get because it fills in a lot of interesting backstory stuff about each of our villains. Let's have a look at Victor Saz. So, Zaz's interview tapes show him being interviewed by a Dr. Cassidy. Patient evaluation five, she says. Victor is not responding well to treatment. Victor, let's talk about the people that you killed. Ah, the zombies, Zaz gasps. Yes, Miss Cassidy, the zombies continuously shuffling through the daily grind, waiting for someone to liberate them. The report states that you have murdered, or liberated if you like, 20 young women in the last three months. Each had her throat slit and was left posed. They were lucky to be chosen to receive my gift. I doubt they would agree with you. Really? You can hear the smile in Zaz's voice. 
How about you, Miss Cassidy? As you take the elevator to your apartment each night, open the six locks to apartment 433. Remember, you forgot to buy your cat food again. How do you know where I, Cassidy, starts? Ms. Zaz continues. As you sit down in your favorite red chair, cat on lap, just waiting for something to happen. I can make that happen, Sarah. I am your salvation. Another tape sometime later. Patient's name is Dr. Victor Zaz, an unfamiliar German accent says. It's a different woman, a different doctor. For the record, the patient has transferred from Dr. Cassidy, who was on leave after the incident last week. Victor, how are you feeling today? Depressed, Zaz moans. Does that help you? Can you get into my mind, doctor? I'm thinking about the one that got away, the one I chose. I needed the mark. I want the mark! And then it cuts off. Another tape sometime later. Our last tape. I am increasingly worried Victor cannot be cured, the second doctor says. He has no empathy for his victims. Deep down, I believe he views us all as potential victims. A guard's voice interrupts her. Doc, are you okay? Zaz has broken out of isolation. He's gone. We don't know where he's gone, but he's definitely left the island. How do they keep getting off the island? Oh, Arkham Asylum, terrible security. Terrible security. Cool. It's still... Are they all swimming? Pretty much, yeah. Is, is every villain in Gotham just an Olympic athlete swimmer? I mean, there is a bridge. And I will point out, by the way, at the very beginning, I skipped over it. In the opening cutscene, when Batman's driving to the asylum, he passes a sign that says, like, careful, um, hitchhikers could be patients. Yeah, on the yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this is obviously a recurring enough problem. <laughs> Why put a bridge and not make, like, helicopter access? I don't want to make this uh, political... But is <laughs> right. is the asylum privatized? Is this? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's it's it's. It was opened by the city council, but there's definitely private money gone into this. Well, there's no. Sorry, Bruce Wayne has funded this. I was about to say Bruce Wayne has that funded. Was a, that yeah. was definitely a plot point in the new Batman movie. It is a plot point in the game. We find out just through through little collectibles and Easter eggs and environmental storytelling that Bruce Wayne has funded the entire medical center. Yeah. He is in. He, but he because he wants to rehabilitate them. Well, That's presumably. that is legitimately the idea. That's supposed to be the idea. Bruce Wayne funded this to make it all work fine. But then after he threw money at it, he kind of just went right. Cool. That's fine. And he never checked up on, like, I'll what they're actually doing. Every once in a while. Yeah, he never checked up on Except what they're doing. Clearly he does if he's going through here as Batman. Well, yeah, as Batman he goes, but as Bruce Wayne he never goes and is like, oh, I, I your ethical think... standards are crap. Okay, but is he never saying that, like, fair. oh, Batman dropped me an anonymous tip. No. I'm your funding. No, to be he fair, should, but he doesn't. Well, to be fair, I think the game, there, there maybe are some holes along the way here, <laughs> but I think the point is raised at the start that it's an exception that Batman goes in with the Joker this time goes inside, they literally say, like, we'll take him from here, and Batman's like, no, this time I want to come with him. That's a really good point that I've never considered. I love these games, by the way, but I'll be the first to criticise that I don't... Th- I think that... I make, I make the point of my critique. The subtext condemns the Asylum. It's annoying that Batman never does. Because it's the Asylum's fault they're all like this. They don't get better. The Asylum doesn't help them. The Asylum just tortures them, effectively. Um, but yeah, so anyway, so Zaz, Zaz, um, so Zaz has left the island, um, and the doctor, when she finds out, this German doctor, she goes, he'll need to kill again. Do you understand me? He needs to. Have you alerted the authorities? And then she stops and catches herself and says, Dr. Cassidy. There's a rustle as she pulls out her phone and calls a number. We hear Cassidy's voice down the line. Hello? Sarah, listen to me, the doctor says, but Cassidy cuts her off. Hold on one second, someone's at the door. Wait, no, Sarah, do you hear me? Do not answer the door. It's Zaz. Sarah? Zaz is free! And then the phone line dies. We don't hear what happens. Right. But presumably Zaz got, got to Sarah Cassidy and killed her. Well. We also find, and at the end of each part, I'm going to give you these. Um, we also find these peculiar slabs of rock. Words are engraved in them in a spiralling pattern. And if Batman scans them, they tell us a strange story. They're called Chronicles of Arkham. There are 24 of these in the game, so you're definitely not getting them all. But for now, let me just show you some of it because they become an important part later. Um, so can I get a bit of a sense of what these are about? Quote, I am the spirit of Amadeus Arkham. Through my actions, I have saved this cursed city. My family's blood ran through the heart of Gotham. We were doctors, politicians, and teachers. My father fell first, infected by some foul design. My mother lived on, but only in a dream. I returned to the family home to care for her. She remained in her bed for as long as her body continued to breathe. 
Her tears kept me awake at night. Anyway, there you uh, go. There's a spirit, ghosty spirit. Ghosty spirit. Here, uh, back to bats and clowns and all that good stuff. Um, <laughs> part two. Me in a thong. What? Has anyone seen the big bad bat? Joker's voice swoons out over the grounds of the asylum. I warn you, he may look like an idiot and talk like an idiot, but don't let that fool you. He really is an idiot. <laughs> Batman tracks Jim. <laughs> Batman tracks Jim Gordon to our second building, the medical pavilion. This is what uh, Bruce Wayne is funded. When he arrives, a laser shield separates him from Harley Quinn, absently flicking through a magazine. That's girl. Scram, bats! This is my me time. Where's Gordon? Wouldn't you like to know? Gordon's voice pipes up from deeper in the room. I'm over here! Shut up! Harley throws her mug at him, and we hear a smack as it hits him in the side Aww. of the head. Oh, you crazy bitch! Jim! Yeah, I know. Not know. okay! <laughs> Not okay. <laughs> yes, she's crazy, but leave her alone. Uh, Joker's face pops up on one of the screens behind Harley, and he's like, Harley! What's he doing here? It's too early! And he points at Batman. And Harley goes, I'm sorry, Puddin'. And she, then she kisses the screen. She goes, don't be angry with me. Oh, you little minx, Joker laughs. I could never stay mad at you. Thankfully, there are a hundred ways into the medical pavilion. So Bats takes to the roof, and as he works on to Gordon, he rescues various doctors locked away inside. Uh, it's one of the things I really love about these games, is that there's a constant emphasis on, you rescue a lot of people as Batman in this game. You're not just beating up the bad guys. Like, constantly saving people, saving hostages, stuff all in the way. One of the doctors that he saves is Dr. Penelope Young, who's held hostage by some of Joker's thugs. Why are there skeletons in oh. the walls? So this is detective vision. Yeah. You push a little button, and th this is this is the origin of all of the, you've you've done you've had played a game where detective vision is. This is kind of the origin of it. it really, Assassin's it, Creed, but was, this it was it was really good. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you're stealthing around, you go into detective vision. You can scan enemies, and it will track their heartbeat. Yeah. And uh, and as you, because you know the whole thing with Batman is fear. And as you take out in stealth mode more and more and people realise their compatriots are going missing, their heartbeat starts to go up until they start panicking. Yeah, it's all very um, cool. Oh, yeah. that's good. Yeah. Same with the combat. I, I don't know if you were planning on talking about the combat. No, no, feel, but feel free. The, the, the combat was totally revolutionary. Yeah. Every, every sort of action game you've played with the combat revolves around bouncing around with three-part combos and parrying and dodge, dodge rolls. Yeah. That, that, this, this kind of was the, the basis in a, in a lot of ways. This game won a shit ton of awards the year it came out. Yeah. People saw it first and went, oh yeah, another licensed superhero game. And then people played it were like, this is a legitimately incredible video game. Yeah. Um, really good. So anyway, so Penelope Young, and she's been held hostage by some of Joker's thugs. Why are you doing this? I've done exactly as you've asked, she, asked, she says. Look, lady, one of the grunts says, if anyone goes near you without Joker's express permission, then I've been ordered to make sure you're taken out ASAP. The boss is all over this job. Planned it like a military operation. Friends on the inside and the out. <laughs> you happy with that? I like your voice. That is the least, the least New Yorky of the <laughs> Benjamin. I think I've slipped into my Frank Fontaine hey. again. Yeah. <laughs> Jerk. So this this goon, he's, he's chatting away and he's like, we're, we're winning, aren't we amazing? And then boom, Batman comes crashing through the roof and crunches the goons into the ground. Penelope Young is saved. Hooray! What's going on? Penelope snaps at Batman as he unties her. Has Joker escaped? Unfortunately, yes, Batman says. And then he frowns and he goes, but not for long. <laughs> <laughs> Every scene kind of has this little like... Yeah, it, it's nice thing. and cheesy. It, it's like... Uh... <laughs> and it's, it's proper like... You see his face frown as he I, as he says, but not for long. I, Does he have the perfect superhero masks that somehow can torch your face? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Austin. I love. I, uh, a billionaire. I love the design in this one. I I, I don't mm. like the design of the undersuit so much, but the cape and cowl are fantastic. It's got the kind of almost the like the long Halloween long ears in this first one. Yeah. Which does. I really like. Really, really big. Yeah. Ears. Um, but yeah, so Penelope Young continues and she goes, He's dangerous. I've been studying Joker's case for months when he broke out. The warden was very specific. He wanted Joker cured. Batman's like, makes sense. Bad publicity will ruin his campaign for mayor. He rescues Aaron Cash. There's Aaron Cash. Uh, oh, yeah. And a bunch of other doctors. Video game bullshit happens. And Young pulls us to the side and she says, I need to get back to the mansion. All of my research notes are there. We can't risk Joker getting his hands on them. Batman's like, it's a war zone out there, you're not going anywhere. And Young snaps back and she goes, it's my life's work. You really don't have the authority to... I don't have the authority. I, I mean, my best friend, Bruce Wayne, paid for this whole place. Is that? I think that's him on the phone now. What's that, Bruce? <laughs> 
You want the doctor to listen to me? Well, okay then. It's not me. It's Bruce Wayne saying you. You want to speak? He has to go now. So, yeah, um, good stuff. Uh, so our next stop is the morgue. Uh, I don't remember why, there's doctors down here or something. Uh, but to get there, Bats needs to take the elevator, and to absolutely nobody's surprise, Joker pops up on the screen inside. Too what? easy, he says. Think about it. I've got you trapped in a little metal box, hanging precariously over a deadly drop. What say I just blow the emergency brakes and drop you like a sack of puppies? Ah, uh, just kidding. I got a few more surprises left in store for you. Prepare to face your fears. Soon, we see what Joker meant. You know what I think this is? What? I think it's the world's most elaborate marriage proposal. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's going to get to the very end of the boss room and the Joker's going to get down one day. I mean, yeah. He, yeah, yeah, I can totally see there's going to be a flash mob as soon as he steps out <laughs> of the lift. Um, so, <laughs> moving on. Uh, um, soon we see what Joker meant by facing your fears. Um, please, Dr. Oh, Crane! Jesus. Yeah. Oh. We hear a guard cry out, Please don't do this! There is no crane! A warped ethereal voice says as the guards start to scream and sob at the top of their lungs. Only Scarecrow! I'm normally fine with things, but I can't deal with teeth things. Yeah. I have such an irrational so just, fear just of, for, like, getting broken teeth. Along, uh, uh, yeah, a, a little content warning for some, some light body horror. Uh, there's some sort of, there's a, this, this victim here has... Uh, their lips pulled back and eyelids pulled back with mm. sort of hooks exposing uh, teeth and eyes and it's very uh, yeah. it's very intense. The teeth are so shattered. We don't see much in the room, just Jonathan Crane's fellow patients, guards and doctors screaming, scratching themselves, howling with fear. A shadow of Scarecrow leers at them and then he darts away into hiding. Tell me, Bats, Joker's voice says over the tannoy, what are you really scared of? Failing to save this cesspool of a city? Not finding the commissioner in time? Me? In a thong? <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see the Joker in a thong. We've seen, we see quite a lot of Joker in a bathing suit in comics, I feel yeah. like. I've got that yeah. image in my head. Remember that time the Joker got pregnant? <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, what? Do yeah, legit. Joker, do you remember that time the Joker was the ambassador to Iran? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. Oh, yeah, oh there he goes. Someone on Reddit's done it. Thanks, Jerry. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so uh, we move to the morgue and start to hear, and this is this is when it gets quite creepy, Jim Gordon's voice crying out for help. Harley must have brought him down here when he was saving the guards. Up on a nearby balcony, we see Gordon gasping for air. He sees Batman and cries out to him. Please, he gasps, help me! But then something drags him away. Deeper into the morgue we go. And then the room starts to change. It tilts. Tiny skittering bugs run along the walls. Something is very, very wrong. And then we find him. Commissioner Jim Gordon, dead. Ow! Batman checks his pulse. There's nothing. I'm sorry. Does he typically die in the comics? No. no. It's very oh. rare that he dies. He has died a couple of times, but um, it's very rare he does die. He has also been Batman. Anyway. <laughs> I, I, I did know that. Yes, I did know that. Yeah, he's been caught Batman. Uh, but no, so Jim Gordon, dead. Um, Batman touches his pulse um, and he, he mutters and he looks looks into his, his dead eyes and he just kind of says, I'm sorry, Jim. And then he, cl he closes his eyelids. This feels like a really poor way to kill off such an iconic character. Uh, yeah. I wish it was used... At a more emotional moment. I agree. Um, so he pulls up his comms uh, and Batman calls Barbara Gordon. Obviously hit Jim Gordon's daughter who works for Batman. And his voice starts to crack for the first time we hear like, he, he's, he's, this is bad. Um, and he goes, Barbara, I, I'm sorry. And the, the Batman voice almost kind of peels away. Bruce Wayne comes through and he goes, Jim, he's beep, beep, beep. The number you have dialed is currently unavailable. Oh, we continue on into the morgue, and Bats... I'm sorry, they communicate over telephone, not <laughs> through some secure Bruce Wayne channel. <laughs> yeah, they WhatsApp call each other. <laughs> we continue to the morgue, Bats ends up in the cool room, where the bodies of the dead are kept. There are dozens of doors here. Mm. It's a big room, fully built and prepared to stock the victims of any inmates who've broken out. Three corpses lie on three tables. The first is his father, Thomas Wayne. Oh. You should have stood up to him, son, the corpse says, like a man. The second is his mother, Martha. So are we assuming then that uh, that uh, Gord is not dead? No, just the Wayne's are in the morgue, in the Arkham morgue. Why? I don't know, because they're dead. 
No. And they're talking to They him. would have been dead years ago. But, I don't think that Gordon's dead. But Batman's mom is like... I oh, think this is all Scarecrow gas. You're a smart cookie. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you're such a smart little cookie. Don't know what you're talking about. All of this is very real and very normal. Um, Bruce is okay. dead, Mom. I'm, 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 less, I'm less bothered by them supposedly killing off Gordon at such an unemotional moment. Yeah. I appreciate that I had you going for a second, though. I'm really glad that you, you were following that. Um, so, yeah, so Bruce's mom then is like, Help us, Bruce! Don't don't let us die! This is creepy, though, when this it happens. I remember as a child being freaked out by that. I do like some cold dead eyes. Mm. Um, so we've got two of the three bodies. It's his mom and his dad. Who do you think the third body's going to be? Robin. The dead one. Uh, the third body is Scarecrow himself. Jonathan oh. Crane. Big he, jump scare. He bursts out of a body bag. The threads oh. of his mask thin and fraying like long spiked teeth. His eyes bulge a luminescent yellow. That I think Scarecrow's my favourite. Batman villain. He's your favorite. Scarecrow's yeah. your favorite. Yeah, I like him. I really like Scarecrow. I think that's... Yeah. He's, he's a spooky one. He's a good one. He's very, very good in this. He's in very this. good in this. Uh, his eyes bulge a luminescent yellow. Batman reels back, hits the deck, and when he opens his eyes, he's outside. Poor little bat, we hear Scarecrow say. You're in my world now, and here everything is real as I choose it to be. So Scarecrow gets his own levels in Asylum. Uh, they're like platforming missions through a broken void, rushing swirling parts of the Asylum around us. Uh, they force us to use Batman's gadgets to sneak around him as he stands oh, at 100 yeah. feet Probably tall. Probably the most iconic yeah. uh, parts of these games. Yeah. And the part as a child when you were playing that you were totally frustrated by. Because you've got to like sneak behind. He's essentially this 30 foot Goliath in the middle of the map with his eyes like a CCTV kind of panning around. Yeah. And if he sees you, you're dead. So you're kind of having to sneak around this broken void. It's, oh. it's yeah. yeah, it's really good. So, um, yeah, and, like, yeah, like the camera pulls back as well. And Batman's so small and Batman's it's all side tiny, on. Yeah. It's very, very good. Basically, they force us to use his gadgets. We sneak around him. Every time Batman gets to the end, this happens like three or four times. Um, he activates his bat signal and manages to like break out of the nightmare by like burning Scarecrow away. Yeah. Um, and that is exactly what we do. Scarecrow melts away, escaping, and Batman returns to reality. Oracle, Barbara Gordon, calls us at last. Bruce, can you hear me? What's going on? Batman reaches the place where Jim Gordon died. It's a guard. The gas only made a sea Gordon. I was right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so good at So Batman, Batman starts to really insensitively dance with happiness over this dead <laughs> guard's think, body. I, I think you might call me the world's greatest detective. <laughs> well, let's see how you do in riddle number two, motherfucker. <laughs> I didn't say I was a riddler. I said I was a detective. It's not the same. So Batman uh, speaks back to Barbara and he's like, I'm fine. Had a run in with Scarecrow. It sold me down. I'll get back to you in a bit. Joker pops up on the asylum screens again, and he's like, Oh, are you lost, little bat? Well, here's the deal. Harley's in the next room with Jimbo. If you can find a way to get to her before she kills the commissioner, I'll give you your next present. Fail, and the old codger dies. Hell, I may even give you Harley. Looks like you could use a new sidekick. Uh, and that's exactly what we do. Uh, boom. Batman knocks Harley out. She's in the middle. Oh, no. Yeah. She's in the middle of mocking Jim. She's like, you know, you really should color that hair of yours. All that gray's making you look so old. And then down she goes. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jim's like, you took longer than I thought as we untie him. And Batman goes, he's out of control, trying to prove something. Jim, I'm, I'm not sure I can stop him this time. Jim waves it away and he's like, ah, oh, you'll do it. Listen, we're not alone. He's just like, yeah, whatever. You're, you're going to save the day. Yeah. Who cares? And he's like, listen, we're not alone. He's got something else down here. I don't know what it is, but it's big. So what does the... I don't know why Jim's getting Comstock's voice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact, in Arkham Knight, he keeps, him uh, he gets completely recast and is played by the guy that plays Mike Ehrmantraut in Breaking Bad. Have you ever yeah. watched Breaking Bad, Chase? I forget. I have, but Can I'm you? not remembering. He's got a really deep voice like oh, this. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's bald, yeah. He's a cracking Jim voice. Um, yeah. But in this, he's a bit doughier in his sound. Uh, it's Tom Kane and he's probably just like, uh, I'm Jim Gordon. Like, almost like he's always got a cigar sticking out of his mouth. Yeah. It's great. Uh, so yeah, so anyway, what's down here? What What is down here? What does the Joker have? Well, uh, shocker, it's Bane. <laughs> We're just throwing the villains at. Famously, one of Batman's strongest villains. A calculated strategist who uses the chemical Venom to develop inhuman strength. So, I 
don't know the first thing about Bane except for that he has a goofy voice. He doesn't have a goofy voice generally in the comics. No, Bane. different character basically. Dark Knight yeah. Rises, uh, B- Bane is not one, like the comics. Not like... I've not actually seen Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> I've just seen scenes with. So when you people. said earlier, I've watched the Chris Nolan movies. You meant what? Two of them? Oh, oh, no. I, I, I meant the two good ones. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I like Dark Knight Rises. It's not great, but it's I like fun. it. Also, um, it, it worth pointing out as well for this character, the sake of this character. Mm. Not white in all other media. No, it's no, only Tom Spanish. Hardy's that's, uh, yeah, he's a, yeah. a Hispanic. And... Um, yes. So he's he's plugged into a machine. Dozens of tubes are sticking out of him. He's weak. It's almost like they're they're like draining the venom. From it's his like uh, it's like Captain America pre, pre-juicing. Yes. Yeah. Um, Bane, uh, tiny spoilers, you're going to see a lot of Bane in this franchise. Bane comes back time and time again. A really interesting stuff they do with Bane. Monty's a big Bane fan. I, I am a big Bane fan. Yeah, if, if he's handled right, he's incredible. Um, but yes, so Bane's lying there, uh, he's strapped up, uh, and he croaks at Batman and Jim Gordon. He goes, cut me down! Batman looks at him with pity and disgust, and he goes, who did this to you? Dr. Young, Bane says. The Bruja, she drained the venom from my blood, must stop her. And that's when Joker pops up on screen and he goes, Sorry, Has Bane, the good doctor won't be a problem much longer. How do you like my puppet? What say we cut him down? He pushes a button and boom, venom pours into Bane's veins. He screams and his muscles creak and bulge as they're forced to grow. As Batman pushes Gordon out of the room and seals it behind him, we see Bane's eyes glow green and he comes crashing out of the machine. Cue boss fight. So there he is all done up and strong. So this is a shit boss fight. Uh, he's just he's just a big meathead. We beat him. Uh, bang, pow, whack. Batman kicks Bane's ass. Why does he wear a silly mask? That is that is not his. No, it's a wrestling mask. A luchador it's, mask. A luchador yeah. mask. Yeah, that's that's wow. his look. In modern comics, they've kind of gotten rid of the mask. Uh, I quite like the mask. It's all about fear. I really like. I like the movie mask. The like weird mouthpiece one. Oh, the, 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 the crab. The ventilator. <laughs> that's the crab, yeah. that's so much better than a luchador mask. Uh, I'm curious to know if your opinion will change as we move on. Uh, yeah, and I'm surprised yeah. you, the king of silly and camp, yeah. doesn't doesn't like uh, just a, a, a random murderer wearing a wrestling mask. Outside of Nacho Libre, I'm not a big Nacho <laughs> fan. So we beat Bane. Um, eventually, uh, Bane, like in, in a final whack, he blasts Batman out into the grounds of the asylum. Bane lifts Batman into the air and snarls in his face and he goes, I will break you, Batman! First you, and then the Bruja! Batman fishes a remote control out of his pocket and jams a button, and the Batmobile comes flying around the corner. Just, what? just before it connects, Bats kicks off of Bane and flies back. Bane and the car go flying. Into Is he the outside now? Yeah, yeah, Bane like bash Batman through a wall okay. out into the grounds. Yeah, so the Batmobile runs Bane over and knocks him into the water. Does, does, the car is gone. Bane is gone. Does Bruja mean witch? Am I mistaken? Does it translate to witch roughly? So clearly it's not safe for Jim Gordon here. Bats <laughs> takes him over to a nearby boat and paps him into it. Gordon's like, I don't like leaving you here. But Batman shuts him down with a good old-fashioned call to action. What are you going to do, Jim? Apparently Joker's planted bombs all over Gotham. You're needed there. He doesn't he think it. there are bombs in Gotham. He does. <laughs> Batman doesn't. Oracle said there are bombs in Gotham. And Batman said, no, there aren't. I know him. It's just a distraction. No, I, th- I, th- I think he was saying... He's not going to detonate. Like, they're there, but he's, he's no, just... No, he, he's pretty sure he said, no, there aren't. It's just a distraction. I know him. Oh. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so why. so Batman is just pamming a jump off of Jim to get him out of there. You know, go and fold some napkins, mate. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's I'll serve the table. Napkins. Go and polish some cutlery. <laughs> Yeah, go fill out that spreadsheet. <laughs> um, so yeah, so so he tells Jim to leave. Uh, the boat pulls out of the dock with Gordon on it. As the boat leaves the dock, Gordon calls like out from the boat to to the shore, and he goes, "Wait, Batman! Bane called Doctor Young Bruja. What does it mean?" It's Spanish. Bat says for which. Hey. Yes, well done, Neil. You called it. Yes. Uh, all right, I've got some interview tapes in the Chronicle of Arkham for you, but first, holy riddle me this, Batman! Oh, <laughs> you're back. Give me a drink and I will die. Feed me and I'll get bigger. What am I? Fire. <laughs> Fire. <laughs> that was <one's> way easier. <laughs> I am the world's greatest Riddler. <laughs> oh no! My title! I only had it for 40 minutes. What? Riddler says. Preposterous! I designed that one precisely to trick you. But the one earlier was harder. <laughs> <laughs> well, Scarecrow interview. Oh, that's not what he looked like before. Uh, no, it's not. Think of it like concept art. It's all concept art, yeah, yeah. 
Um, yeah, this isn't how he looks ever. He never wears the silly hat. Does he have a scythe? In some versions of the comics, he has had a scythe, yeah. I meant in the game. In the game, no. no. Oh, boo. What he does have, it's quite fun, actually, and I've not described it to you. His gloves he wears, each finger has a syringe needle at the end of it, and he he jams it into your neck to... That's so good. Yeah, it's very cool. It's really gross. He's a gross, gross, gross man. Um, So, yeah, so, Scarecrow's interview tapes. So, we open with uh, a voice, and the voice goes... Patient appears to have suffered from a breakdown of sort, likely after the death of his wife and child. Continued observation shows little mental activity. It's as if the shock of what he saw triggered a mental collapse. We hear angry voices from outside the room. There's someone in here! It's him! We found him! Break down the door! Note to self, as ever, it is difficult to continue my research under such conditions, the doctor says. (laughs) Boom! A door flies open and we hear boots as guards rush into the room. Crane! The guards shout. Step away from Dr. Combs! The guards yell. There's a tussle as Scarecrow's wrestled to the ground. Someone get a medic! The guard yells. God, what's Crane done to him? So Crane was like, he'd taken over. Experimenting on. During his own interview. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Uh, Tape two, sometime later. This time it's an actual doctor. (laughs) And the doctor goes, Patient interview six. Dr. Crane has been back in custody for three weeks. Regular sessions have been inconclusive. I'm not sure he's actually insane. Mm. Good evening, Stephen, Crane says politely. How are you tonight? I'm conducting the session here, Jonathan. Of course, Crane says. If that helps you cope, I wouldn't have it any other way. You are, were a respected doctor, a brilliant mind. You worked here, but now you're just another resident of Arkham. Tell me, doctor. We hear Crane lean in and like clasp his hands together and he goes... What are you afraid of? Tape three. Today I have another interview with Crane, the doctor says. I have been feeling anxious. I don't like to admit it, but I think he's getting to me. There's a glitch as the tape almost like skips forwards a few hours. How are you today? Crane asks. I keep telling you this is my session. It was your session, doctor. Not anymore. We hear a guard's voice clearly sitting in the room with them. So half of the villains in this series... Just used to work at Arkham. Here's the fun. Uh, now, here's the fun thing about this, right? Because people love. I fucking hate the meme, right? Because it's so stupid and it's such a surface level reading of Batman. But people like to use the meme of like, oh, Batman's just a billionaire that beats up poor mentally ill people. No. In some people's think, right. Think. Victor Zaz is a billionaire who just likes to kill people. The scarecrow, Jonathan Crane. His whole thing is that he was just a psychiatrist who went mad with power. He's not arguably mentally ill. He's just this this obsessive with, with fear and, and he likes to torture people. He's just a psychopath. So not all of them are victims. Psychopath. Bane is just a gang leader who's also rich. A lot of Batman's villains are richer than Bruce's, um, like financially. Penguin, oh. Penguin is a billionaire. Two-Face, victim, but he's never treated anything other than the victim by Batman. Anyway, Crane cackles. The doctor asks, Doc, are you okay? And then Crane cackles at the guard. He goes, oh, he's fine. Just questioning his grip on reality. You should be doing the same any second. A beat, and then we hear the guard's voice break. Ma? Ma? Is that you? Wait, what are you doing? He's joined by the doctor gasping for air on the floor. Help! He adds, I can't breathe! (laughs) <laughs> like I said, he laughs. You're all part of my experiment now. And our final interview tape. Working alone, I've created my ultimate fear gas, Crane says. Its potency is a revelation. We hear various voices locked in the room with him, losing their minds. Get away! Get away! They're all over me! Please, Daddy, I don't do it! And as the screams grow, just too loud, crash, we hear Batman's voice. Give it up, he says. Now! How come you're still standing, Scarecrow quivers? How is the gas not affecting you? Who says it's not, Batman rumbles. The, the, the thing about Batman that I think if it's written well can be done, can be quite good, but it is always just the thing that you just have to accept with him. And it's kind of personified in those Scarecrow missions where you defeat him by firing a, the light of the bat mm. signal at him. He's just sheer will yeah like this yeah. will affect anyone else i just have more willpower i guess <laughs> like, i know people hate it and it yeah. is a silly thing yeah, yeah. i fucking love it that that's yeah. just how he overcomes like things like the gas and stuff yeah, it's so good see you'd think that if scarecrow has been his enemy for this long mm-hmm. he'd have built a fucking gas mask into the bat mask uh yeah <laughs> yeah but, but bear in mind scarecrow injects you sometimes he if uses he gas well, some, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, if he gets close enough. And he's, he's a little man. He's not a big, strong guy. I think the the fingers should also shoot the syringes. 
on those strings. So, Chronicle of Arkham 2. If you remember, this is the spooky ghost of Amadeus Arkham, who was the founder of Arkham Asylum a hundred years ago. A scarab beetle, question mark? That is the symbol of the Arkham family, the scarab beetle. Why? Um, it's there's a few kind of it's all about re, the it's all about rebirth it's all symbolism from the comics. Um, his mother used to eat beetles because she was mentally ill. You know, he mentioned this in the last Chronicle of Arkham that Arkham's mother uh, was mentally ill. Um, she she lost herself. Um, so yeah, so this is a continuation of Arkham's journey while he's setting up the asylum. Again, all of this takes place about a hundred years ago. Okay. So he's like. My journey lasted a little over a month. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> he's, not, he's not actually this cookie, but it's kind of what he does. <laughs> Visiting academics in Metropolis and Keystone, I was exposed to a wealth of new ideas. I began my day returning home in good spirits, eager to see my wife and family. I ended it kneeling in their blood, broken fragments of my life pouring through dripping red fingers. So he came home and his family were killed. I returned to my work. They brought the animal before me, the man that killed them. Shameless and barking like a mad dog. Ooh, for what felt like days, I endured his boasts. He took pleasure recounting his actions, cataloging his crimes. What should have been revenge turned to pity. This poor dog needed my help, so I helped him. I knew I was the one to fix this city. And so my asylum was born. New brick, metal, and paint covered old wounds. Fresh blood was injected into the body. So, what? serial killer killed his family. He decided, I'm going to cure you and built Arkham Asylum. I mean, good yeah. guy, good guy Arkham. On a surface level, certainly seems uh, like a pretty amazing guy. Yeah. That's uh, not many people Arkham. could do. This that. is fully tangential, and I don't know why that made me think that. Right. Are other superheroes mentioned in these games? Um, well, we not... just heard Metropolis. Yes. Well, that 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 is why it was. Superman head, yes. gets referenced once in Arkham Knight as a throwaway line by a henchman. Uh, See, that's what that's it. Because obviously, if, if the next game is Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League. Clearly, they're about. Fun fact, uh, we only know this now because of the press stuff with Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. This ju the Justice League does not exist right now. It does exist later in the timeline, but in this timeline, so, there is no Justice League. Superman's about. It will exist post-Arkham Knight, assuming. Post-Arkham Knight, the Justice League is formed. Okay. Yes, yes. Um, apparently, that's what they've told us in the marketing. There are this, these games are stuffed with Easter eggs and hints and name drops about different people and places and locations, like, all the time. It's like... Yeah. All the time. Yeah. Easter eggs out the wazoo. Yeah, so many. That's the main I was wondering, was whether whether they were referenced. Yeah, you're absolutely yeah. right, they are. But um, uh, you, you are to believe that Superman is flying around during this time. Okay. Uh, Why is he not helping? Well, he probably doesn't really have much of a relationship with Batman during this time. We have no confirmation that they know each other or hang out or... Okay, fight. but if Superman knows that stuff's happening, you should go help. Uh, it's it's also a little bit like this. It's the classic thing, right? Of like, like why don't the Avengers get involved in the Spider-Man games? It's all yeah. the typical stuff. The why answer, don't they? Yeah. Well, the answer. If they're sat there watching shit happen in New York, where their tower is, why aren't they helping? There is more of a case to be made for the Spider-Man games there with Batman. It's a case of ba Gotham is Batman. Superman doesn't get involved with Gotham. What? He, it's, it's 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 collegiate respect. They're colleagues. It's collegiate respect. This is your area. What if Batman can't handle it? Like, I'm not going to walk into the sales department and be like, oh, this is how you do sales, you know? Why not? Because that's bad. I'm stepping so out of my... It would be so more efficient. No, I'm stepping out of my corner. I'm putting my nose where it's not yeah, wanted. It'd be more efficient. You'd get sacked for toxic behavior, and rightly so. Too. You yeah. think you can sack Superman? <laughs> <laughs> Superman will eat breakfast. Part three. Be your best friend. I already was. With Jim safely off the island, Bats calls up Oracle and tells her to find anything she can about Dr. Young. It seems she's been up to something fishy. This is Penelope Young, who's like, I've got the formula and you don't have the authority here and all that stuff. So Batman's like, I'll look at it in the Batcave once you're ready. A Batcave? Oracle asks. On Arkham Island? I built it years ago. It's best to plan ahead for situations like this. <laughs> So evidently didn't have that much faith when he was funding the place. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, true, yeah. How did you keep that a secret? Oracle asks. It's me, remember? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very cheesy. I killed all those guys that made it. <laughs> That's true. How, how do superheroes build their secret bases? They build them themselves. How? <laughs> Batman and Alfred together just building it. Uh, and the Robins. The Robins can help. 
Are they engineer? Does he currently have a Robin? Yes, uh, I will point out to you that yes, right now he has a Robin, Tim Drake. So you had Robin 1. I recognize that name. So you had Robin 1, which is you'll meet them as the franchise continues. You had Robin 1, which is Dick Grayson, who went on to become Nightwing because he didn't want to be a psychic anymore. Then you had Robin 2, Jason Todd, who got killed by the Joker, beaten to death with a crowbar. Then you had uh, Robin 3. Tim Drake. Tim Drake, who um, is... A great Robin. So Batman's like, it's me, remember? I'm off to the Batcave. Whoa. So we head to the Batcave and Oracle fills us in on what she's learned. It turns out that Dr. Young was heading up a project. It was big. Lots of external funding. Someone outside of Arkham was funding this. <laughs> I wonder who. She was experimenting on Arkham patients as part of it and has been able to design a new chemical called Titan that partly resembles Bane's venom, but it's stronger and more potent. But Young's formula is missing. That must be what she said she hid back at Arkham Mansion. Batman gasps and he's like, if Joker gets his hands on this, he'll be able to create an army of a thousand Banes. It's time for Arkham Mansion. Has Batman put together yet? Mm -hmm. You know, the gun that he fought earlier that big was big like Bane. Does he mention that? Oh, yeah, that's probably what that was. I will just confirm for you now that Batman has not put that together necessarily. <laughs> but we, it is, that's, a, it's called a Titan monster. Those big, like, thing that died of a heart attack. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, it's time for Arkham Mansion. The mansion is decadent. Antiquated. I wonder if Bane is going to be given Titan. Uh, what I will say is Bane's now not in the story. Bane, oh. but he comes back later in the he franchise. Car, now he's dead. Yep. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah, got knocked into the water and that's it. We won't see Bane for the rest of the Arkham games. Uh, for, for, for Arkham Asylum, sorry. For Arkham Asylum. Um, so yeah, so. That's dumb. Arkham, yes. Arkham, he's just there for a boss fight. The Arkham Mansion is decadent, antiquated. This is the original home of Amadeus Arkham, the spooky ghost that we've been hearing from. I also like how they really need to make sure that the bats in this game are shaped like Batman bats to try yes. and validate the fact that Batman's bat does not look like a bat. It's very cool. Like, it's very comic booky because when you enter a new room or something, the title of the room will come on and the bats yeah, will, like swoop these the bats off. like aren't in the room they're like animated for our yeah. perspective but it is it is it is quite comic booky mm. the the like combat indicators you know for uh you know when to do a, a dodge or when to do a parry are all kind of like zigzaggy yeah. comic booky like yeah. spider sense lines almost they're very cool Love it. Um, yeah, so so this is the mansion. This was the beginning of the asylum 100 years ago when Amadeus Arkham built it. Um, the rest of the asylum then kind of grew from here. Now, it's Warden Quincy Sharp's home. It's overrun when we get there. To be honest, Joker wouldn't even need to control the asylum security systems to get in here. As testament to Warden Sharp's arrogance, there aren't nearly as many security gates, terminals, or weapons in the mansion. This is where Sharp lived, and he thought it was basically untouchable by the patients. So, just arrogant idiot. As we work through the mansion, Oracle fills us in on what she's learned. And she says, There were numerous payments made to Dr. Young's account. It seems like the main funding for the project came from a Mr. Jack White. Any guesses who Jack White might be? Half of the White Stripes. Uh, yes, it's half of the White Stripes in real life. I do recognize the name. Who of... do you think Jack White might be? It's a fake name for a character we already know. I'll tell you that. Oh, is it the Joker? That's one of Joker's aliases, Batman mm. says. So he was funding the Titan research? It seems that way, says Oracle. But then the payments seemed to stop. Well, not stop exactly. Declined. Young put a block on her account. Sounds like she had a change of heart. I bet Joker didn't like that, Batman says. No, he didn't. Take my fucking money! <laughs> fucking take it! I can um, rob so many banks! I've got an email from the Joker here. My wallet, it's overflowing! Please, help me! <laughs> I like your Joker, he's fun. Um, so, yes, I've got an email from the Joker here, sent to Dr. Young. Young begs him to stop the experiment, says it's too dangerous. He's not listening, though. Let's see, uh, random threats to her family, a couple of bad jokes, a picture of a dead baby, and another threat. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's grim. So he decided to get himself back to Arkham, find his formula, and create the army himself, Batman says. I need to hurry. So with all of the gadgets and abilities we've unlocked by this point, the game has stopped funneling us so much and the gameplay takes over. The wait, whole... wait, mm -hmm. did, did, did he just say that the Joker was going to finish it on his own? Yes. Are we assuming the Joker's a chemist? Yes. Oh. Joker, notoriously in the comics and in this, is uh, pretty good at mixing chemicals together. He makes laughing gas that can kill people and laughs them to death. He loves all that and shit. And he's usually a genius of some, yeah. of some level. He ah. is quite a smart guy. He's just mad. 
Um, so yeah, so he's doing his thing. So the whole time, Joker is barking at Batman over the speakers while we're exploring. It's a Metroidvania, by the way. I should have pointed this out. Yeah. Yeah, you get gadgets and stuff and you unlock rooms and things. Yeah. Mod, you've made me like this game 10,000 times more. I thought that would. It's my favorite it genre. The others aren't quite as Metroidvania-y. No, shit. Uh, but this one definitely is. Oh, I love it. So yeah, and so Joker's at it and he goes, why don't you just give up, he moans. Go on, roll over and die for once. Be your best friend. <laughs> so uh, Bats struggles to find Young, but he does find the Titan formula. It's in a safe. Quincy Sharp knew all about the work being done on Titan. We snap a quick picture of it and then burn the paper so Joker won't get his hands on it. But it's never that simple. Oh, what's that you've got there, Bats? No, not the formula. What am I going to do? Who can help me now? Hmm, how about our old friend, Zaz? I did bump into him on the way to the garden. I thought you said he was going to be inconsequential. He's inconsequential. He showed up like eight times now. He showed up once, then we had the interview tapes, and now he's showing up again. <laughs> For like eight times. five minutes. Fine. So, yeah, sure, eight times. Yeah, you got it. Matt's Chase Matt! <laughs> it's like dog years. It's like girl math, but chase math. Takes care of it for things you're slightly annoyed by. <laughs> So yeah, so so Joker's like, oh, I did bump into Zaz on my way to the garden. <gasps> and he's taken Dr. Young hostage. That fingerprint is 100%. There's no cum in there. <laughs> so on screen, it's Neil, you're, you're, you're course, describing this. Pity. It's just a fingerprint on screen. That's <laughs> all. There's some, finger, there's some fingerprints on the wall. Uh, yeah, but as yet, no yeah. cum. So Joker's like, yo, I bumped into Zaz. He's taking Dr. Young hostage. Oh, no. Hmm. Maybe I can get her talking. I think he probably can. Great plan, Bats. And Batman oh. ignores him. Um, Batman rushes off to catch up with Zaz and Dr. Young, but Scarecrow has other plans. His gas fills a wing of the mansion. The room tilts, and we hear the voices of Thomas and Martha Wayne on the fateful night when they were killed. Trish, remind me, you know Batman's origin story? Of course. Well, too bad, you're getting it anyway. <laughs> I feel like at this point, he should stop being traumatized by this. Never, never, well, never, never. He's wow. been subjected to... Okay, okay, but he's been subjected to it by his villains so many times, surely it's tired by now. Mm -mm. I don't know if that's how it works. I feel like if my mum and dad got gunned down in an alleyway when I was 10, I don't think I would ever I'd be able to. I'd be able to use that in subsequent fights with you, you almost Batman... indefinitely. Do you think Batman has hired a therapist? Uh, no. uh, well, no. in some versions of the comics, um, a psychiatrist called Hugo Strange, uh, Batman goes to, to a therapist and Hugo Strange, through the therapy sessions, figures out, twist, that Bruce Wayne is Batman. <laughs> through those therapy sessions, he manages to figure that out. Hugo Strange, baddie, villain. Yeah. Oh um, no! Yes, yes. Just, um, um, yeah, Batman's behaviour doesn't scream is, of someone who's g getting help, no, does it? No, Is anybody in Arkham a goodie? Uh, or are they all baddies? Jim Gordon's all right. He doesn't really work here, though. He's just yeah. showed up. Uh, no, so, the, some of the doctors and stuff are legitimately trying. Then why did he not go to one of them? Well, he didn't know also, as part of as, as part of Jim Gordon's job, he's throwing people in here. He's complicit. That, I think that if he really wants to show the efficacy of Arkham Asylum, he should check himself in yeah. until he gets over these parent issues. Yeah. 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 So at the so Batman's wandering through, um, and uh, Scarecrow's gas makes him think about his parents, um, and he's like, "Oh my god, they died! I'm sad." Boom, 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 boom. Um, the mansion then transforms into Crime Alley, the place where they died. So they were shot in Crime Alley. Mm -hmm. I still ha I did know that I still hate it. <laughs> well, there's there's, lo there's lots of crime, so. Um, it only happens in that one alley, though. Yeah. Nowhere else. Yeah. The rest of Gotham, famously safe. I'm pretty sure it's called Crime Alley because they die there. I'm pretty sure, yeah. like, Gotham oh, renames it. Alley. I think yeah, so, yeah. I don't think it's, like, nominative. Why Crime Alley? It's... Why not, like, Wayne Alley? I don't know. Gun down that guy's parents' alley. <laughs> like, Bad yeah, Time Alley. Yeah. Was, was... Definitely not Batman's origin alley. <laughs> yeah, the guy who, who, who named it was definitely late to work and behind on that presentation. <laughs> 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 Came up with it in the list. <laughs> so in a flash of lightning, Batman transforms into Bruce Wayne. We play all of this. Um, he's age 10. He collapses next to the bodies of his parents. <laughs> he turned into a little age 10 Batman. <laughs> a little mini bat. Um, there's a beat, and then we hear Gordon's voice echoing through the gloom and the rain, checking after him, looking after him. Just like in the Nolan movies, Gordon was first on the scene. Mm. Um, so that's why Bat tr Bats trusts Gordon. Showing him an ounce of kindness in a world that's cracked. Cue our second Scarecrow level. Batman makes it through, banishes Scarecrow, and we head to the upper floors to reach Penelope Young and Zaz. 
A quick batarang to the head and Zaz is knocked out. That was easy. Uh, again, inconsequential. Uh, Young sobs, but Batman doesn't have any time for her pity. He walks straight up to her and he goes, I saw Bane. I know, she says. I... Joker threatened me. He wants an army, a horrible twisted force to destroy Gotham, but he couldn't do it without the formula. I hit it, but you gave it up. So now he has Venom oh, and that, the formula. Is, just taking, is, is, is it based on Venom? Yes. Okay. They've taken Venom, they've reworked it. Young thought she was developing a chemical to cure the Joker, but that's not what this was. I see. Yeah. Why would a super strength serum cure the Joker? Good question. <laughs> Comics. She doesn't sound like she's a very good chemist. So uh, yeah, so Batman's like, oh, no, also, Joker, yes. <laughs> where did where did Venom come from? Uh, a plant, not a symbiote. No, a no. plant. It's a plant. It's a plant that they've extracted the chemical from, synthesized it, Who turned it to. Did Bane make it, or did Bane just? Uh, get it? no. Oh, there's Bane too many people it, no. to remember all of. The... It doesn't matter. A scientist somewhere made it. It's not that important. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it comes from a plant. That's all you need to know about Venom. It comes from the plant. So, Joker now has Venom and the Titan formula. Oh no, he can make lots of Titan. Um, and Young's like, he's got gallons of the stuff. There's a lab hidden in the gardens. It's locked off, but the security codes for the entire island are here. And she heads to a safe on the wall and starts to open it. What else is he planning? Batman asks. Oh, how should I know? You think anything that Madman says makes any sense? And as she opens the safe, confetti and streamers fart in her face. <laughs> Joker has booby-trapped the safe. Young screams. Batman leaps to try and save her. But he's too late. An explosion rocks the room. Young is torn apart. Batman is knocked back and everything goes dark. Dr. Rip. Young dead. Bye. When we come to, we see Harley Quinn and a couple of cronies with Quincy Sharp still held hostage. Poor Dr. Young, Harley says, stepping over bats. But you know how Mr. J hates a squealer? And talking about squealers, she smacks Sharp across the face so hard that a piece of his walking stick snaps off. This old loony actually thinks he runs the place. Talk about crazy. <laughs> they drag Sharp, kicking and screaming, out of the asylum. And as he is, he's, he's begging for his life. And he's like, please, somebody help me. Oh, you know, yeah. <laughs> Thankfully. Batman is the world's greatest detective. He picks up their trail quick sharp and follows to the penitentiary. Joker can wait. It's time to save the warden. But Wait, first, the whole thing isn't a penitentiary? Do you? No, like there's a penitentiary building. This is the mansion. But they're locking people up everywhere. But no, but there's like, it's like maximum security, this ah. bit of the building. Um, but yeah, so. Wait, then why wasn't Joker in there from the start? Who cares? Uh, next, it's time for a riddle. <laughs> So, a cowboy rode into town on Friday. Three days later, he left on Friday. Friday's his horse. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> his horse is called Friday. See, I knew these would be easy, but too easy. Fuck. Okay. The first one was hard. Apparently. Uh, right, okay. <laughs> right, well, uh, yes, well done. You've unlocked your interview tapes. So, uh, Harley Quinn's tapes. Oh, classic costume. So this is the classic costume, yeah, the fantastic art here, really good, really good look. Um, so yeah, tape one, there's there's a few here. Um, so tape one, Harleen Quinzel, a doctor says, Call me Harley, everyone does. I'm surprised you want to intern here at Arkham Asylum. I've always had a thing for extreme personalities. You can't deny there's an element of glamour to these super criminals. These are hard core Immediately psychotics. don't give her a job. <laughs> yeah. Immediately don't give her a job. These are hardcore psychotics, the doctor says. I don't know. I feel like that's half the people who works here is a reason for working here. Yeah, yeah, good point, yeah. good point. That's yeah, probably yeah, a pretty sure. good selling point. Put on yeah. your cover letter. Um, so the doctor's like, they'll eat you for breakfast. I mean it. One or two of them will enjoy it too. Be careful. Tape two. We hear Harley's voice. Patient interview number one. So, I'm your first, am I, toots? Joker's voice says. Well, you never forget your first Who time. Who the fuck would give the Joker to the intern? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. What? Not wrong. That is crazy. That is the worst yeah. management decision. <laughs> yeah, there's there's like being thrown in the deep end on your first day, and then there's interviewing the Joker. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Joker's like, well, you never forget your first time. I'll try to make it memorable for you. Tell me, why do you do the things you do? Harley asks. Why don't you tell me why you think I do them? Fame, notoriety, a desire to stand out from the crowd, and a wicked sense of humor. Joker gasps. You're good! How did you figure me out, Doc? I've had plenty of folks pocket poking around in here for years, and no one was as astute and, if you don't mind me saying, beautiful as you. This game's so horny. <laughs> Harley lights up at that. She goes, really? No, you're just playing me. 
There are a couple more tapes that I won't regale to you where Joker finds ways to woo Harley, he plants flowers in her office, stuff like that, and the two spend every single day together for a couple of weeks. And she's not concerned at all that the fact that he somehow broke out of his cell to plant those flowers? Uh, no, not at all. She's, she's smitten with him. Um, tape three, final tape. He's crazy, you know, Joker says. Who? Harley asks. Batman? Of course, Batman! Always Batman! I've seen it in his eyes, screaming mad stalkers! <laughs> and dishonest, hiding his face behind a fright mask. Well, no masks for me! It's I have. wrong. Hmm? I have nothing to hide! Listen, sweets, Batman knows we're all in the same funhouse slide into madness! <laughs> Why won't he admit it? He's laughing at us. And the real gag is the miserable liar is allowed to run free while I'm in here! You understand. You know why I'll do what I have to do. You know Gotham's only real saviour is me. We hear a shuffle from Harley's side of the desk and she goes, oh, By the way, I, I got what you wanted. Good, so you're ready to stop that evil bat once and for all? Of course I am, Harley says. He needs to pay for what he's done to you. Well, come on then, Doc. We've got a bat to kill. Nuh-uh! There's a bang, like the door of the cell has been blasted off its hinges. Suddenly we hear an alarm blare in the background. The ducks out, Putin! Say hello to Harley Quinn! Hmm. That's got to have been difficult for Harley. Essentially on their third date, and he's just talking about his ex the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I will say... Does, I... does the Joker want to kill Batman? I thought his whole thing was he just liked to play with Batman. Uh, I'm not going to give you Depends because, on the writer. It depends on the writer, depends on the story. This very... The, the beauty of this franchise, I think, is that as we go on, jo Joker is given flesh, bones, muscle. By the end of it, you will understand who he is okay. and what he wants to do. As, as, at least of the ones I understand, I remember him thinking that Batman died at one point and being like, oh, I'm really cut up about this. Yes. There's a recent There's a that. recent story uh, about, yeah, about that. Out? Well, there's probably a couple of them, but there's a recent story, I can't remember the, the, remember the name of it, about... Uh, uh, Batman dying and Joker losing his smile, basically. On to our next chronicle of Arkham. Uh, so, ooh, Spooky Ghost. I don't have the picture, but you get the idea. Spooky Ghost. And he says, My family's killer stood in front of me. Years of therapy have deemed him sane. I was proud to see him walk free. He talked about wanting to walk in a park. How long he longed to feel fresh air on his face. And then he took my father's fountain pen and killed my secretary. As he was subdued and the guards beat him to a stain on the floor, he begged for mercy. I had none. So yeah, um, after curing him, or not quite curing him, uh, Arkham... Immediately killed again, and then... And Arkham was like, fine. Yeah. Well, we beat him up then. It's, yeah. it's obviously... It could be read as... The, the ineffectiveness of the asylum and its brutal methods. That's why people aren't rehabilitated. Mm -hmm. But it would be good if this franchise, like some other franchises we might talk about one day, focused a little bit more on rehabilitation. Because it's something that mm -hmm. some Batman in the comics and like Superman and Spider-Man are generally always very focused on is not just locking people up, but actually rehabilitating them. So it would be nice to see that done effectively. At it's almost point. like every study posed shows that that is more effective than incarceration. It's a good time for me to raise this then. Uh, so Arkham Asylum, uh, the game, is is based very loosely off of a Grant Morrison comic called Arkham Asylum, A Serious House on Serious Earth. And the, the, the t there's no titan or any of that sort of shit in it. But the basic plot is Joker takes over the asylum for a night and he essentially plays a game of hide and seek with Batman where all of his villains come after him and he's locked in the asylum. And it's an exploration kind of of like Batman's mental health and how different is he really from his villains, all that stuff. Um, but one of the really the things I really like about that story is Two Faces in it. Two Faces is not an Arkham Asylum, but Two Faces is a key character in that comic book. And when he arrives, Two Face is just a wet, rambling shell on the floor because of the experiments that the Arkham staff have done to him, where they've been trying to stop Two Face focusing on duality. You know, he flips his coin to make choices. They are weaning him off of that to the point where he's using dice. Then eventually, when when we reach him in, in the comic, he's on tarot cards. So oh. his choices move from two to six and, and bigger and bigger and bigger choices. But 
the problem there is that too many choices for something to the point where Two Face has to play tarot cards to figure out if he can go to the bathroom or not. And it, like it does not help to cure him, but they think it's cured him. Um, so he wets himself on the floor. It's a really horrible moment. Mm -hmm. And at the end of all of this, after a night in hell in the asylum, and after Batman has been tortured by his villains, he grows to empathize with them to, under these horrible circumstances. And his final act before he leaves is he reunites Two-Face with his coin. And he gives it to him on the way out. Uh, and Two-Face flips it to decide whether or not Batman will live or die. And Batman chooses to put his life in Two-Face's hands just so that Two-Face can find some semblance of some normalcy again. And it's a really lovely last moment in a really mess, really messed up story that's very dark and messed up. Um, just show Grant Morrison, just re yeah. Grant Morrison understands Batman so well. All they, of Grant Morrison they, stuff. They are my favorite. And again, Chase, I will happily lend that to you. Oh, do you have it? I have it. It's sitting right behind you. Oh, I was about to say, I was, I was just about to Google it. Art is very upsetting. Um, but I will show it to you in a break. I'll show it to you in a break. So next, part four, off the party list. Arkham's penitentiary is harrowing. Rows of isolated cells with nothing but a tiny shutter on the door. It's solitary confinement on steroids. We see cells belonging to Riddler, Two-Face, Freeze, a bunch of Batman's rogues. But now they're mysteriously empty. It's not that ever. mysterious. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, you're right. Sorry, there has been a mass breakout. Um, it's clear that we will never meet uh, Riddler, Two-Face, Freeze in this game. Uh, they're safe for later. But it's clear that Harley and her goons have definitely come through here. Bats follows the trail of Quincy Sharp's blood, leading right to the Green Mile. Not the Green Mile as you know it. It's called the Green Mile because Poison Ivy is locked in her cell here. Hey. It's a punny name. Batman, please, Ivy says. You've got to help my babies. Is she made of plants? Uh, uh, she yeah, has plants growing up part of her. Yeah, yeah, she's 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 plant woman. She looks like she's broccoli. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, there's a, that reminds me of a, a great joke in Garth Marenghi's Dark Place, and I hope maybe two of you out there got that reference. So she's like, please, you've got to help my babies. And Batman's like, I'm really not interested in some flowers, Ivy. And then she's like, no, they're in pain, crying for help. And he's like, just stay where you are. Last thing I need is you running free. He journeys on, so he's just like, not interested in whatever you want, Ivy. Moves on. He journeys on and finds Sharp locked away in a security office. Goons surround him, but we make short work of them. And as he approaches the glass, something seems kind of off. Get me out of this cell, Sharp says, pacing back and forth. He doesn't seem injured anymore, though. The blood is gone. Weird beige smears are on the floor around him. Come on. <laughs> I knew it was going. God damn it. <laughs> God damn it. I mean, also the cum handprints? <laughs> so we hear a voice on the floor above. Quincy Sharp's voice saying, Hello? Batman turns to see where he is, and when he turns back to the cell... Sharp is gone, and it's now Jim Gordon. Oh. Damn it, Batman, let me out of here, Gordon says. Why is there a sex doll in the back? Good question, I'll explain that in a sec. Okay. Uh, the hence the cum. Hence the cum! <laughs> I knew I was onto something here. This video is not getting monetized. <laughs> Are any of them? We might have to, we might have to cut some of this, you know. No. So, no, I refuse. Uh, Bats surmises that this must be Basil Carlo, a.k.a. Clayface. Yay! One of Neil's favourites, for the record. Yes. I, I, I don't know who that is. He's a villain with shape-shifting abilities oh. because he's literally made of clay. Oh. Well, he's the first person <clears throat> in the entire thing I've not known. So, uh, this isn't all that important, but Clayface was once a famous actor who fell to madness after learning that one of his classic movies was being remade with a new star. He went I'm sorry, he has the ability to take any face he wants and he chose that ugly mug. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Well, that's kind of his standard, it's isn't his it? It's Why is his standard ugly? Well, because he's got I, like... Some of us weren't blessed with good look. You can <laughs> he... say my standard is ugly. <laughs> he has the ability to choose his own standard. Yeah, but it's like he's Why does he not look this like is him his... This is him relaxed. Why does like... he not look like his sex doll? Think of it this, like Which, this why thing. is the sex doll in the I'm, chair? I'm, but... I'm getting to that. I'm getting to that. Any Anytime Clayface changes look, it's almost like he has to... You know, like when you really need to shit and you got a clench? That's kind of how it feels. So... This is just his natural relaxed form, right? So he's not shit. After he found out that this movie was being made of the new star, he went on a killing spree, got his powers from messing around with a group called the Mud Gang. <laughs> <laughs> yada yada yada. 
But by, technically, this is not Basil Carlo, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Wait, who the fuck is it? Def- this is former Clayface. This is, Cl- this is Clayface 3, a guy, what? Called, <laughs> a guy called Preston Payne. But th- don't worry too much about that. So, I-, I am worrying. Why are there so many Clayfaces? Because this is my favorite Clayface story. Is every Mud Gang a Clayface? No, no, no. Look, he, look, doesn't matter, right? Do they right? all have sex dolls? He became, I'm about to get to the sex doll. <laughs> so he got, so basically, he, tur- he turned into Clayman, right? And he can shapeshift, and that's amazing. Good for him. My favorite Clayface story is an Alan Moore one that this picture is taken from, where Clayface falls in love with a clothing store mannequin called Helena, and he I thinks know. he thinks that Batman is like the other man in that relationship. <laughs> <laughs> so they get into a big fist and comes about it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great story, but it's not Basil Carlo. This is Press and Payne who gets involved in that kind of love triangle. But it's just a fun Clayface story. We are focusing on Basil Carlo, this guy. Okay, this is our universe's Clayface. Um, so yeah. Anyway, the real Quincy Sharp is upstairs. But he still has a sex doll. He has the mannequin. It's just an Easter egg for people who know that silly story. That's all. Um, and they put it. Look, kudos to Arkham. They gave him Helena. You know. <laughs> yeah. Creature comforts. Sure. So anyway, so the real Quincy Sharp is upstairs, um, <laughs> right? <laughs> Batman just in there fucking all day. <laughs> the guards hate coming down here. <laughs> But guards don't hate coming. <laughs> so the real Quizzy Sharp's upstairs. And Bat goes up, Batman goes upstairs. He unties him. And he's like, Joker's taken over security. But the sequencer can act as an overrider. I'm going to stay here. Lock the gate after you leave. Can't have someone of my stature falling back into their hands now, can I? Uh, we pull into the screen of a security camera where we see Harley Quinn sauntering down the green oh. mile towards Ivy's cell. And Ivy is like, Harley, you have to help me. My plants, climate change, etc. And Harley's like, Ivy, gee, you look like crap. Maybe I can sneak you some shampoo. The plants, Ivy gasps, they're in agony. And Harley's like, I don't have time for this. But that's two characters now that have been like, I don't have time for this shit. (laughs) I don't have time for this. And you're not on Mr. J's party list. Why has Ivy not been given a pair of pants? She's wearing underwear made of leaves. (laughs) So she does have pants. She gave herself pants. Why did they not give her pants? They gave her a shirt. Good question. Because it's a cool character design. <laughs> Broccoli lady. Broccoli lady. So yeah, so 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 Harley is like, well, sorry, Ivy, you're not on Mr. J's party list. Eh, what the heck? I'll cut you a break. And she releases Ivy from her cell. The gaze. Well, this is pre... Mm-hmm. Uh, this is sort of the, the last generation of stories mm-hmm. before... Uh, Harley gets to take a little bit of agency and before we get their relationship, right? This is yes. sort of... Uh... The way it is in the comics, uh, camera fits like to right now, but as of a few years ago, and especially in the Harley Quinn TV show, Harley Quinn is broken up with the Joker now. She's in the Suicide Squad. She's doing stuff. She hates the Joker. And uh, in the Harley Quinn TV show especially, her and Ivy are married, in, in fact. Yeah, in a yeah. very loving relationship. Very healthy relationship too. It's great. Um, that TV show was wonderful. Yeah, it's really uh, funny. Really, really funny. Uh, so anyway, so, but right now, no, they are not in love or anything. They're just pals, effectively. They're just criminal pals. Um, so yeah. Anyway, she releases Ivy from a cell. Ivy kind of steps out and, oh, she like stretches. She goes, oh, that feels so much better. She strides on to the Botanical Gardens, which is about to be our next stop. But first, boss fight with Harley Quinn. Uh, we kick her ass in a maximum security wing, the floor's electrocuted, and she's all like, you know, Bats, I always thought there was a spark between us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, as, she go- yeah, as she goes down, Joker pops up on the TV screens. He watched the whole fight. Um, and he goes, well, sorry, kiddo. If you can't beat the Batman, then I'm afraid you're off the party list. Harley shrieks with rage, does some backflips, and goes in to kick Batman in the face. But Batman grabs her by the legs. Swings around. It's absolutely brutal. I, and I, he's, I, I too do backflips when I get angry. As she like like launches in to kick him, Batman grabs the leg, swings her around like a baseball bat, and as hard as he can, smashes her into a metal bar. Her head bounces off the. She's got a concussion. But he doesn't yeah. kill. He doesn't kill people. Doesn't kill. Doesn't, doesn't kill. kill. No, doesn't Batman kill. doesn't kill. Uh, no. If, <laughs> what's that? I just I'm, 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 I'm connected. Isn't there a lot of theorizing about? Um, psychopathic killers having head injuries at some point. Anyway, um, <laughs> those are those are my favorite compilation videos on YouTube. Is of this game with the Batman never kills yes. co- yeah. compilation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, he's, he's very like Cosmic Curio in that way. Tonight. You know, he's he's, oh. his car. he's he's gonna get way more violent as we go as well. But we'll get to cure you later on. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so so anyway, so Joker says like you're off the party list. Harley's raging, Batman knocks her to the ground, Joker disappears from the screen, and Batman and Harley are alone together. 
And Batman grabs a piece of paper from Harley and looks at it. And I will point out that it's sitting in her cleavage and he just pulls it out. Of course. Um, and it's the so-called party list. We see a list of Batman's rogues. Two-Face, Catwoman, the Mad Hatter. Some of the names are crossed out with sad faces on them. This is never explained further. <laughs> in the entire franchise, never explained further. Wesker. Arnold Wesker is um, the the uh, oh, the puppet. The puppet. Oh my god, what's his name? Uh, the ventriloquist. Scarface. The ventriloquist. Yeah, the I ventriloquist. will not imagine him as that. I will imagine him as Albert Wesker. Albert Wesker from <laughs> Resident Evil. Um, so yeah, so it. So yeah, so Batman's like, why are there smiles next to certain names? And Harley's like, you're the detective. You tell me. And we never find this. And out. She's like, so. please tell me. The game design is not going to. <laughs> please. It's clearly a plot line that they just forgot about. So whatever. I think is it maybe just people Harley likes because these are, it's in the same style as her doodles on on the side there. Yeah. Or maybe it's it's sad faces are people in the asi- uh, not in the asylum, because uh, we know that uh, Killer Croc and Clayface are both in the asylum. Yeah, that's true. It could be. <laughs> Batman locks Harley in one of the cells and he moves on. Next stop, the Botanical Gardens to find Joker's secret Titan lab. But first, our riddle: um, Kate's mother has three children. One child is called Snap, the other is called Crackle. What's the third child called? Well, you want me to say Pop, but um, that's obviously not it. The an- the answer is not Kate. Yeah, Kate, you're absolutely right. Well done. Kate, duh. Yeah, well done. Kate's mother. Well done. Yeah. Um, speaking of the Riddler, do you want his interview tapes? These are these are really good, these. These tapes document conversations. <laughs> oh, is it the picture of him? It's all I see is the fucking one slur. <laughs> oh my god, I hate it. So these tapes Tumblr document- has rotted my brain. <laughs> these tapes document conversations between Dr. Penelope Young and Edward Nigma, aka the Riddler. So his fucking name is Edward Nigma. I hate that. <laughs> It's so good. Enigma? You get it. Enigma. Yes, that's why I hate I, it. I don't think you're following, Chase. Enigma is another word for riddle. Oh, I've never heard of that before. <laughs> so these tapes document Penelope Young, Enigma talking, um, and Young is like, So, Edward, Warden Sharp tells me you've been leaving threatening riddles scrawled on the asylum walls. Again. <laughs> One would have to be severely paranoid to read threats into harmless riddles, Doctor. May I test you with one? What walks on four legs, then two legs, and finally three legs? A person. A human being, Young says. As a baby, it crawls on what four a legs. Sphinx he is. As an adult, it walks on two, and in later years, it uses a cane. And Riddler chuckles quietly to himself, and he goes, <laughs> Good try. But the answer to all three is a baby. True, it crawls on all fours, but cut off its legs and it can only wiggle around on two limbs. Give it a crutch, it can hobble around on three. You see? Young grimaces and is like, that's horrible. How can you even joke about that? Easily, Doctor. It's not my baby. <laughs> so, uh, What's up with this game and dead babies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the second time. Yeah. Second dead babies. Yeah, too many dead babies. So, um, Well, is the baby dead or just legs cut off? I'm not going to query it. Tape 2. <laughs> Patient interview 44, Young says. I'm currently unsure if Nigma is a suitable candidate for the Titan program. I can't make up my mind if he's a genius or just deluded. Whichever he is... Are just... geniuses good for the program? I thought you wanted strong people. Well, she wants to cure Nigma, so he's got, he's got like obsessive compulsiveness, neuroticism, etc, etc. Mm. Um, and she thinks the Titan could cure him. Whichever he is, just being in his company is both irritating and exhausting. <laughs> really predicting ten years worth of fun reaction there. And then it's very clear that she's sitting across from Edward while she says all of this because then she just kind of looks up and just goes Edward, tell me about your obsession with Batman. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and then Riddler goes hardly an obsession, Miss Young. I simply feel an obligation to expose him. You know who he is? Young asks. More importantly, I know what he is. The mask, the weapons, the scare tactics. Stop! Posting pictures of the one slur. <laughs> Is this going into our chat? I'm oh, good. actually, I'm going to put it in the Discord. Oh, God. A <laughs> uh, little, little teaser for... He's a criminal. No different from Joker, Two-Face, or myself. People are idiots. They can't see Batman for the villain he is. Rail me this. How do you think he gets his car and his gadgets, hmm? Young struggles to answer, but then Riddler cuts her off and he goes, With the money stolen from the criminals he defeats! Why does Commissioner Gordon turn a blind eye to his antics? Batman bribes him, of course! The answers are right in front of your stupid, gawking face! And he, like, it cuts off as he gets angrier and angrier. Uh, so, Chronicle of Arkham 4. The Gotham Police brought a new patient to my asylum. All scales and teeth. 
My mind ran free, dreaming of delicious punishments to break this monster. But he was too strong. I took my frustrations out on a lone patient. His case notes suggested he was a paranoid schizophrenic. His pleas as I beat him to death suggested much more. The doctors I'd hired bored me with theories and ideas, proving they had no theories on how to cure these animals. Only one shared my vision. I offered her a chance to explore her dreams. She accepted. We will make a good team. What do you think of that? Repeat it. Oh yeah. my god! I knew it! I knew it! It's so important. <laughs> this one is so. This is key. <laughs> For fuck's sake! Too busy posting pictures of the fucking one slur. I was like, "There's no way they were listening." Oh, it's even funnier because the message I was typing was literally, "Yes, I'm typing this while we're recording." Why do you ask? You will have this confiscated. <laughs> Sorry, right, no, I'm not reading the whole thing again for the sake of time. You're getting the cliff notes. The okay. cliff notes are this. Spooky ghost. Spooky ghost man is saying, the Gotham police brought a new patient to my island. Cool. All scales and teeth. The lizard. Yeah. Amadeus Arkham was 100 years ago. Cool. How the fuck old is Killer Croc? Uh, old. Yeah, I thought also, we knew that. I also, thought I was just known. No, no he's not 100 it's years not old. I'm though. telling you right now that Killer Croc is not 100 years old. It's weird that this is referring to Killer Croc. Second, um, he's basically saying, like, I kill patients because I like to kill patients. So this is an evolution in Amadeus Arc. Okay, so he doesn't like helping people. Um, and also, he says that clearly there's only one doctor in the entire facility who has any idea how to cure the mentally ill in my asylum. You can do that? <laughs> Chase, Penelope Young has been trying to do this this whole time. Uh, and she's useless at it. Yes, she thinks like, that you give people steroids and it cures, cures mental illness. Yes, but clearly this voice is saying, like, there's only one person who has even an idea of where to start cool. here. This is weird. Amadeus Arkham was 100 years ago. Why is this? This doesn't seem like it's... This little ghosty, ghosty, talking about Killer Croc. Yeah. Is, it, is a ghost speaking to the patients and the doctors? Who knows? So, part five. Everyone's dying to see what I do next. So as Batman leaves the penitentiary, Oracle rings us up and is like, listen, be careful when you get to the botanical gardens. Scans are coming up hot. Something bad is happening there. She's right. Global warming. Jo <laughs> Joker has run riot through the place. He's no longer holed up in a security room. He's out and about and he's taken a guard hostage. He stands at the far side of a flooded, electrified room. You need to stop this now, Batman growls, before oh, it goes too far. They're not even a full guard, they're a trainee. Oh, I've never noticed that that's trainee a trainee. 618. No. So yeah, so Batman's like, stop, Joker, stop. And Joker goes, stop, but everyone's dying to see what I do next. He holds a knife to the guard's throat, hesitates, and then kicks a live fuse box into the water. It bursts, electricity shocks the water. Let the guard go now, Batman shouts. And Joker is like, really? Okay, if you say so, Bats, and pushes the guard to the water. <laughs> he screams in agony as he's electrocuted. Joker retreats to the next room. Another dead body, our feet. That's the kind of very poor choice of words moment, like in the dark night, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. I also think, like, that after 10 years, presumably, of, of fighting Joker, Batman still thinks that using, like, the toddler voice is gonna, let him go now! You, you put it down! Put it down, Joker! Every scene he's like, stop it. Yeah. <laughs> Every time Joker's like, no. <laughs> yeah, it makes I mean, he always gives them a chance. They That's the thing, like right? Old married couple. He always gives them the, yeah. the warning. Um, so yeah, so uh, Joker kills a guard, runs off further into the botanical gardens, um, and he speaks to Batman over the tannoy, and he's like, you really need to speed things up, Bats. It won't be long before I have an army of titan monsters at my fingertips. Just imagine me being carried through the streets, <laughs> stepping over the corpses of all those lovely, dead, innocent civilians. Pushing on, we reach him again. Look who's discovered our secret lab, Joker grins. He's standing in an elevator on the far side of the wide room. Humongous barrels with Titan printed on the side sit next to him. Since you made it this far, let me show you what I've cooked up. He pulls out a purple gun. It seems fairly innocuous, like a plastic toy, and shoots two of his henchmen with custom-made darts. Within seconds, the henchmen's bustles Within seconds, the henchmen's muscles bulge. The their, muscles. Eyes, <laughs> their eyes turn green, they grow a further 10 feet, and suddenly Batman is faced with two titan monsters. They don't look that strong. Those uh, dudes were yoked already as well. Yeah. Did you see them? They are very hard to fight in the game. Uh, they're, they're really tricky fights. Um, this time, a heart attack won't save us. It seems like Joker is getting close to perfecting the formula. Mm -hmm. 
has uh, when has he had time to do that? It somewhere, like excuse been... me, somewhere between uh, putting a tripwire on a safe, <laughs> leaving, <laughs> leaving, leaving shit all around the. Internet. He has time to do like full <laughs> academic level chemistry. I like to think that. He, I like to think he bumps into Enigma in the in the walkways and in the like air vents. Oh, are you just going to? Yeah, I'm going to plan some bullshit. <laughs> I, 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 he's, probably, he's probably the full time to write. The are we? Are we doing the same thing? No, no, I'm not really part of your thing. Do my thing get in the way of your thing? <laughs> we have to use the shared calendar. <laughs> So Batman kicks the Titan Monster's ass, but Joker descends into the bowels of the botanical gardens and locks it down. There's no way in. As he tries to search for an entrance, Batman stumbles across Poison Ivy, relaxing by a fountain. She's she's chatting happily to a vine when we find when we find her. It's all right, my darlings, she says. I'm here now. Nobody's going to hurt you. I'll kill them first. We learn that Dr. Young mutated the Arkham plant life to create Titan. She's found the venom plants. She's not just been experimenting on the prisoners, her and Sharp have been experimenting on the flowers too. That's why Ivy could feel them in pain. Batman figures that if Titan comes from the plants, Ivy might be able to create an antidote. Why should I? Ivy laughs. Let Joker have his fun. I like watching you squirm. A vine shoots out to go for Batman's throat and quick as a flash or quick as the flash. Well, yeah. No. Well, that's another one. Well, Batman grabs it, squeeze it. I'm, I'm wasted on you two. Uh, he grabs <laughs> it, squeezing. Immediately, Ivy drops to the ground, feeling its pain. Every plant on this island will get the same if you don't cooperate, <laughs> Batman says. I will beat the shit out of a sunflower. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me how to make an antidote. He, he picks it up, he's just gobbling on it. Yeah, 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 he's got a pair of scissors held to the... Drop it! <laughs> <laughs> So uh, Ivy does tell us, uh, and she's like, there's a very special plant that can give you what you need. It grows deep in the island. And then she smiles, baring her teeth, and she says, in Killer Croc's lair. You didn't think it would be easy, did you? He has a layer yes. on the island. I'm gonna tell you now. And they never script. they never figured that out. Well, so Croc wasn't kept in a normal cell. He was too strong, too dangerous. He was kept in his own special cell in a room right below in <laughs> with a lot of skulls. A lot of skulls. Yeah, yeah a lot of human skulls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is not hidden away. <laughs> you yeah. walk by this. Um this is one of the riddles, to be fair. Um so yeah. Give it to me. What is it? <clears throat> No, 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 this is, I mean, this is one of the riddles you do. I'm ready to solve it. Okay, uh, where does Killer Croc live? In our hearts. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. The real Killer Croc was the friends we made along the way. <laughs> so we learn that Sharp and his management team would like just let Croc roam around in the sewers under the asylum as a reward for good behavior. What? <laughs> yeah, um, and sometimes patients would just go missing down there. This is not inconsistent now with what we know about Warden Sharp, I feel this is, yeah. yeah. Why is he rewarding him for good behavior and nobody else? I don't know. Also, does that, th that cage does not look like it's very strong. We've walked past intensive treatment like, cells. It, it doesn't even look like he could fit in there. Yeah. But yeah, so off to the sewers we go. We're off to find Killer Croc and get this antidote plant. As we fight on, suddenly the vines and plants of Arkham Island start acting strangely. They start to burst out of the ground, growing at an astronomical rate. Mutant flower heads bud in the grounds and start attacking everyone. Batman, Joker's henchmen, they don't discriminate. Batman's like, oh, God damn it, I'll deal with that later. First I've got to make this antidote. And then it happens. Dum da dum dum. So this is the Arkham jingle that we hear before anybody speaks. It goes dum da dum dum. Oh. It's it's actually you, kind of iconic. You, like, you, you, you've been missing out on us. You've been holding out. Sorry, yeah. Um so it rings out over the tannoy. Did anyone catch the game last night? A smooth robotic voice says. I don't like sports. And then the game crashes. Oh <laughs> The opening cutscene bleeds into view. The bat signal is suddenly different. It's upside oh, down. Frowny. Blots of darkness make it look like a grinning face. The Batmobile tears through Gotham streets, but this time, it's Joker driving the car. Batman is in the passenger seat, shaking like he's lost in a bad dream. It's uh, it's worth saying that when this happened, it's a kind of very uniform experience across people who yeah. were playing this for the first time. Everyone thought their their console or computer yeah. had crashed. It is so convincingly done at the first time. It's a very it's pro. This is probably the most famous moment from this game. I'm going yeah. to make Starting a note and show it to me over lunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Would you, um, mind, would you mind putting your screen on so I can't see the one slur dancing in that <laughs> gif? <No. laughs> 
It's in the corner of my eye. I can't take my eyes off it. Thank you. So, suddenly, we are playing as Joker. Batman is strapped into a standing gurney. Zaz wheels yeah. him down the hallway. Oh, look at it. Harley Quinn follows on security detail, keeping a gun trained on him. Can I keep him, sweetie? Please, please, please. I'll feed him and walk him. I promise, she says. <gasps> Scarecrow. I'd let Harley walk me. We know. <laughs> <laughs> me too. I'm more of a Catwoman guy. Can I keep him, sweetie? Please, I'll feed him and walk him. Scarecrow steps out of the shadows and leers at Batman. And he goes, just got to check your prisoner. He hisses at us and we flash into the perspective of Batman. We really should feel sorry for him, Scarecrow says. He never fully got over his parents' death. It left him quite insane. What is going on inside your head, Wayne? <laughs> He's gone. Just a twisted shell of a man. Out of curiosity, how many villains know Batman is Wayne? At this point? In, at really this point, say. none. Okay. Right now in this universe, none. <laughs> This is a scarecrow hallucination. Well, yes, I got that yeah. part. <laughs> um, in the real world, um, quite a few, a shockingly, shockingly lots. Um, Why isn't it common knowledge then? Have they? Uh, do they just respect him enough to not spread that around? Some of them, it's a case that we respect you enough. Um, like Rich Al Ghul, you know, from uh, from Batman Begins, he, doesn't he knows in, doesn't have like, interest in telling the Joker or, about yeah. it. Um, a lot of them, it's it's competitiveness. If the Riddler found out, the Riddler wouldn't tell the Joker. He likes to have that power over his enemies, you know, because um, the, 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 the criminals are very rarely united. They're always fighting each other. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, yeah. So he's like, what's going on inside your head, Wayne? And then the voice of Bruce Wayne bursts out of Batman's mouth and we hear him scream, cut me free. Joker pulls his gun out and levels it at Batman's skull. Oh, I've waited a long time for this. Let's start the party. Boom. He pulls the trigger. And Batman bursts out of his own grave. He's lost in our final Scarecrow level. All around him are alternate versions of himself in straight jackets. Oh, final? Are we near the end of the game? We are close to the end. Oh! Versions of him in straight jackets being experimented on. Electroshock therapy. The sort of torture that Gotham's criminals went through in the asylum. His deepest fears come to fruition. What if deep down he belongs here with his villains? Oh, so the fear... He does. The fear hang on, the fear isn't... Have I done this to these people? <laughs> no, the fear, I, my reading of this scene, it's a reading of the scene, my fear of this is, I belong here just like them. I'm in the exact yeah. same situation here as Joker was at the beginning. I think you can have those work together really nicely, though. You know, Arguably. I can I can empathize because I can see myself here, and oh God, mm -hmm. imagine if I had to go through what I've put these people through, totally. in, directly or indirectly. Totally. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I'm no criticism of that, I, I agree with you. Um, so yeah, so, his determination, his sheer will stop him from completely losing himself. We flash to reality. He stands with his hand wrapped around Scarecrow's neck. Why fight it, Batman? You're as crazy as the rest of us! Because I've got a big muscly brain! <laughs> <laughs> you need us as much as we need you! I think you need a little more! And he screeches and stabs us in the side of the neck with more fear toxin. But Bats summons his resolve and pushes through. His grip loosens, but he doesn't fall into the dream just yet. What? How are you doing this, Scarecrow roars? You've ingested enough toxin to drive ten men insane! What are you? He pushes Batman back. I'm Batman. He pushes Batman back and scurries off conveniently into the sewers right into Killer Croc's lair. Oh. Um, we find him standing next to the rushing water, holding a sack of his fear toxin. One step closer, Batman, and this goes into the water. The cave will fill with your deepest, darkest nightmares. Whoosh, splash. Out of the water rises an unlikely saviour. With a snarl and a roar, Killer Crop grabs Scarecrow and whirls him around. We see the sack of toxin drop to the ground, out of danger of being picked up by the water. Batman throws a batarang at Croc's shock collar, and zap! The electricity rocks his scaly flesh. He's stunned, but still holding on to Scarecrow, and with a final bloodthirsty roar, he dives back into the water, taking Scarecrow with him. Oh. Batman says nothing. <laughs> but that could have gone better. <laughs> Scarecrow, deed. <laughs> so, some time later, our hunt for Venom takes us to the door of Croc's lair. Winding, claustrophobic tunnels are the oh. theatre for this boss fight, but we don't fight him. Um, this is stellar. This yeah, moment. so the, the games, as well as being, like, really well written and funny and whatever, this scared me as a child. Yes, like, these, the, there was some legitimately good horror stuff in these games, and this is one of the bits that I always come back to. Yeah. Croc is too strong, Batman's too weak from being gassed by Scarecrow. We are praying a predator's den. The plan is to get in, get the plants we need, and get out. It is a great sequence, it's very tense, it's the third best boss fight in the entire series, and to be frank, Chase, 
Arkham has one particularly in City is one of the greatest boss fights in any superhero game. Oh. Generally, this is a franchise that does not do boss fights well, unfortunately. Um, but when it does them well, it does them really well. So yeah, um, once Batman gets the Venom, crop bursts out of the water and frantically chases us. Like you're, you're, you'll see here on the left, you're, as you're walking, you can't move too fast or else you'll show Croc where you are. He's under the water hunting you and he will burst out and charge you and you've got to use your gadgets to stop him and get away. It's very good. Um, but yeah, we race to the exit, and as we do, Batman sprays some explosive gel on the walls and the floor in the shape of a bat. Which, which he always fun. does, by the way. Whenever always. you spray explosive gel, he always takes the time to make it into a little bat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, Croc comes, like, charging headfirst, uh, and just as he's about to reach Batman, Batman, like, detonates it. The walls explode, the floor goes out from underneath him, and Killer Croc falls to his doom. Um, and at the last minute, Batman leaps back to, to escape. So yeah, uh, Croc dead. Well, oh, probably... Um, well, I mean, he just looks like he's fallen in some water, really. I mean, yeah, probably fine. Yeah. If he's been alive for 100 years at this point, he's probably fine. Sure, man, yeah. Unless that was Grandpappy Croc. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's please, a... please. I'm, I'm Mike. My dad was Mr. Croc. <laughs> <laughs> See, um... Call me killer. <laughs> this has been all action-packed, very fast, very PC. Uh, it's a little too much for me. I need a breather. So, uh, riddle me this. Which word becomes shorter when you add two letters to it? Uh, short. It's E-R. It's oh, the two gotcha. letters. It's short. Ha, ha. We, ha, are, ha, we are, we are, we are, we've got you, motherfucker. We have got you. I might take a break and stick another hard one. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have to go come up with one off screen. Okay, uh, interview tapes. So, Killer Croc. Tape one. Quincy Sharp, Aaron Cash, and Dr. Gretchen Whistler are all present for this interview. Aaron Cash, the guy that lost his arm. Do you understand me, Whistler says. Yeah, yeah, I hear you, bitch. So, when's dinner? I'm getting hungry. Croc. <laughs> yeah, no, I know, they all love, love the right The killing I can look over, but let's just cool it on the disrespectful language. We're here to help you, Mr. Jones. You gonna cure me, Doc? You gonna make me normal? How about this, Doc? You let me go now, and I won't eat you. Was Killer Croc ever normal? Uh, no, he has atavism. This is He's a crocodile man because he has an atavism. It's just a weird mu genetic mutation he was born with. Atavism? Like his skin and everything. His genes are all messed up. He, he was a small, young crocodile boy, and he grew up into a big, tall... <laughs> he must have been so cute. Imagine a little crocodile boy. Yeah. Oh. Um, what I will say, Chase, is before this is over, you will get to see what Croc looks like around about the age of Don't 20. Don't Google little Don't. crocodile boy. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, so he's like, oh, I'm going to eat you for dinner. And uh, Whistler is like, you don't really eat people. It's just an urban myth. You think? Croc tries to laugh and it just comes out like a guttural snarl. And he goes, keep believing that, Doc. And he kind of bristles a bit and we hear the table move. Sit down and shut up, Cash barks. You think I'm scared of you, Cash? Croc roars. I've got your scent. You're... We hear the high-pitched whine of the stung collar as Cash activates it and it shocks Croc. And I've got yours too, Cash says. And you know what? It stinks. Carry on, Doc. Aww. Whistler yeah, interrupts. you're so intimidating. Yeah, yeah, you got him. You yeah. got him, got him, Cash. Whistler got interrupts. <laughs> She's like, yeah, please don't do that again, Mr. Cash. It's not helping. And then she softens with Croc and she says, I'm sorry about the caller, but what can we do if you insist on hospitalizing three guards? Strap on whatever you like, Doc. This thing just tickles. I am happy to wait here. Wait for the bat. He'll be back and then I'll kill him, then Cash, and then you. So, uh, tape two, last tape. Last night, Whistler says, the doctor. The patient was pacified after a breakout attempt. Guard Aaron Cash is in hospital. Reports state that the patient attacked Cash and in the struggle consumed his left hand. Cash is lucky to be alive. <laughs> Me too, Croc giggles. I nearly choked in that bony hand of his. I told you, you're just food to me. And once I get a taste, I want the rest of the meal. I've got your scent too, lady. I'll see you around. Tick tock, tick tock. Oh, fun reference. Yeah. Very his fun. voice is terrifying me. Yeah. yeah, that's as close as that. That's very good. Said, he's fair. very, he's very, very intimidating. He's very scary. Yeah, uh, he, and he is yeah. kind of like you're trying to hear the teeth and the snorting as well. You've yeah. got. He's very good. I'm very impressed. Uh, Chronicle of Arkham time. Ooh, Ooh the spooky ghost. Oh, so. I'm listening this time. I promise. <laughs> this, th these are important now. Anyway, so you ready? Ooh. Ooh. I, I, I watched, watched in silence, silence as they brought in, in the, the woman. woman. 
Her skin now of venomous green, hair a fiery red. The wanton creature no longer looked like a human being, much less a woman. Once I've dealt... She looks like broccoli! Once I've dealt with her, I think it'll be time to see if green wood does, in fact, burn. And here's another one. Sitting in the darkness... It's not made of wood, though. Yeah. That's a bad, that's a bad metaphor. Oh, yeah. Not great, not great, ghosty. Uh, and here's another one. Sitting in the darkness outside of a cell, I watched the crazed twitching of that damnable clown, listened to the disgusting words that came from his mouth, and then I saw it. How could I not have seen it before? The crazed monster had a confederate. I saw with my own eyes one of the doctors whispering to him. My skin crawled with revulsion as she kissed the glass. Soon, I would execute the creature and lobotomize his confederate. Yes, a lobotomy, the very thing. But first the clown. Amadeus would not have let him live, and neither should I. So is there multiple Amadeuses? Does Amadeus possess everyone? I will tell you that a couple of Amadeus Chronicle, Arkham Chronicles ago... Amadeus Arkham stopped talking and someone else started talking. This is somebody else writing these. Who is it? Mm. The spirit of Arkham. Uh, part six, I will make the salad. Uh, Batman, takes the, <laughs> Batman takes the plant back to the Batcave and plugs it into the Batcomputer to be analysed. He's going to make his antidote. The process is slow, difficult, and ultimately does not produce much antidote at all. That's the bad news. The good news is that the chemical will reverse the Titan transformation. It does work. And with time, the Batcomputer should be able to replicate the formula so he can eventually mass produce it. But time is what we don't have. As he takes the antidote and pockets it, Ivy's vines burst into the Batcave and come crashing down on the Batcomputer. It's destroyed. She's our new priority before taking down Joker. Why'd she do that? But Ivy knows we're coming. I am everywhere, she says, speaking through the plants. Through why, the green, it's called. Why, though? My babies know your every move. You will fail. And we, we will become the most powerful force on the planet. Suddenly, dum da dum dum, Joker chimes in. Oh God, Bats, does she ever stop going on about those plants of hers? But Ivy hears him. When I finish with Batman, I'm coming for you, Joker. Will you really? Joker sounds legitimately amused by this. And he goes, well, that's gratitude, isn't it? Women, you give them presents, experimental chemicals and nice costumes, and they still turn on you. Well, good luck, toots. I've got an army, a city-sized dose of Titan, and a bag of weed killer. Come find me when you're done with Bat Brain. You'll bring the wine, and I'll make the salad. Ah, very nice. My, I also my got brain, the same 80, thing. my yeah. brain, ADHD as it is, immediately cut off that sentence after you said that he had a bag of weed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I have I, a bag of weed, Batman. Let's get toasty. <laughs> Oh my god. Batman, want to come over to mine? We can get a couple of pizzas and play some. <laughs> I've got Mario Kart. Ho <laughs> ho! <laughs> I'm gonna play as Yoshi. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yes, uh, if, to, to infer from that, Joker in injected Ivy with the Titan. That's why she's gotten stronger, that's why the vines are going nuts, and that's why she's like, oh, I'm gonna take over the world. Why isn't she hench, though? Ivy, um, Ivy, Ivy, like Ivy's that? sort of unabashedly mostly a good guy, in my opinion. Even Generally, at this yeah. point, yeah, cover the world back in plants, you know. Yeah, she's certainly one of the most empathetic, one of the most empathetic villains he has. Yeah. Whereas, like, she's just trying to do her thing, man. Leave her alone. Um, yeah, not the most empathetic. We will get to him, but one of. Um, so, some video game later, we make it to Ivy. The botanical gardens are a jungle now. There's barely a hint of Arkham left in here. Nothing but a sea of the green. I won't let you destroy them, Batman, says Ivy. I was a fool. I thought the plants were in pain. Now I realize we're evolving, growing stronger. The vines burst out of the ground. A gigantic bulbous flower that looks like a rose grew teeth bursts out of the ground as well and encases Ivy in a protective shell. Q, boss fight. Bat throws some batarangs, does some flips, and eventually we, he's able to stun the flower. He sprays his explosive gel on the protective casing around Ivy. In the shape of a bat? In the shape of a bat. Oh, what an artist. It, it blasts open. Ivy's knocked unconscious, and um, 
It wasn't until like, going back through this that I realized that Batman doesn't actually bother injecting her with the antidote. <laughs> he oh. kind of just forgets to do this. <laughs> so Ivy is all he, tightened up. He, 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 does, he doesn't have enough. Yeah, yeah. She's not important. Keeps getting forgotten. You could say that it's a real puzzle why he forgets. A conundrum. Uh, what's the word? Riddle me this! <laughs> one last time, one last riddle. There's a one-story house. Everything in the red house is red. The walls are red, the bathroom is red, the floor is red, the kitchen is red, all of the bedrooms are red. So, what color are the stairs? There are no stairs, it's a one-story house. <laughs> are you peeking? <laughs> <laughs> right. Are we three? I think we're three for three now. We're both tied for Master Riddler. When Batman solves a Riddler challenge, he Riddler calls us up and is like, Damn it, how did you solve that one? And all that sort of shit. Every time he calls, Batman gets a little closer to tracking down his signal. It turns out that Riddler is not in the asylum. He's in Gotham. He broke out. With the final puzzle solved, we get our final call. <laughs> Does he find that out? He goes, oh, damn. Yeah. Problem for another day. Jim, uh, I lied about the bombs. I actually need you to go and pick up Riddler. <laughs> <laughs> I'm busy right now. I'm not. I'm gonna kind of stop dealing with this shit. Yeah. So Riddler's like, "There's no way you could have beaten me." Well, you asked for it, Batman. My final challenge for the whole of Gotham is just seconds away, and his voice trails off, and we hear sirens in the distance. <laughs> Batman sent the coordinates to the GCPD. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Down on the ground, the cops bark, and we hear Riddler squeal as they arrest him. And he's like, "How?" And he's dragged away. And he goes, "How did you work out where I was? Do you hear me? I, Edward Nigma, will." And there's a dull whack because he's knocked out. <laughs> That's it. Rid Riddler gone. There we go. At last interview tapes, Poison Ivy. He's great. Patient interview, Pamela Lillian Isley. We don't um, we don't learn this doctor's surname. Uh, his first name is Stephen, so we're just going to call him Stephen. And he goes, how are you today? Fine, Ivy says. Today is a special day. This is the anniversary of my new life. When I found my true self, my destiny. When I was shown a bigger world, a world I should protect. Of course, my first offer was refused. Offer, the doctor scoffs. You tried to kill everyone in Gotham, Pamela. You released thousands of poisonous spores. Hundreds of people died. And it's like, I'm not interested in bodies, doctor. You can practically hear Ivy, like, frown from, like, confusion. And she goes, horrible, fleshy sacks walking around, destroying my babies. But, the doctor says, aren't you one of those fleshy sacks? You're, <laughs> you're a, Horrid. you're, you were a doctor. How can you turn your back on us? You were a doctor. Now you're a fleshy sack. <laughs> and uh, Ivy goes like, well, quite easily as it happens, but not you, Stephen. I feel like we have a connection. Tape two. Pamela, Stephen says sometime later. I got what you asked. Do you like? Oh, for God's sake, <laughs> these fucking doctors. <laughs> So if you remember, I don't know if you know this, Chase, um, she, she's able to use her pheromones to, to turn people for yeah, her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I um, do you think they do that? So, and, and Ivy's like, oh, yes, Stephen, I love it. Such a beautiful flower. May I keep it? Oh, no, Pamela, I can't leave it. It's against the rules. But I get so lonely on my own. You wouldn't want to be lo me to be lonely, would you? No, of course not. Fine, keep it. Just don't let anyone know. You can trust me, Stephen. Now give me a kiss. I can't. People will see. What's wrong, Stephen? Don't you love me? Well, of course I love you. And then the tape stops. Tape three. This time it's Quincy Sharp interviewing Ivy. Where is Dr. Kinneman? And don't stop me with your games, Miss Isley. We have security footage of the two of you leaving your cell last night. We know you hypnotized him or whatever it is you do. He has a wife, a child. So do the plants he tramples underfoot. Why does he deserve anything more than them? But plants have wives. But plants have wives. <laughs> I refuse to put the welfare of plants before people, sharp burbles. And that, Warden, is why you will lose. And that's, that's it there. Mm. Your last Chronicles of Arkham. <gasps> I am the spirit of Amadeus Arkham. Are you? Even though Amadeus has long passed, his spirit lived on, surviving, moving through the walls of the asylum. When it chose me, I felt proud. I was honored to continue his work. If you are strong-willed enough to follow my tales, you are strong-minded enough to deduce my identity. Come, find me, friend. So, I know you know the answer to this, Neil. Chase, any guesses as to who the spirit of Amadeus Arkham is? It is a character we have met. Batman. 
It's not Batman. Oh. <laughs> Rogue. Do you want Rogue to try and give dice. a real answer <laughs> that isn't the hero? <laughs> yeah, it should be fair. It was a vaguely real answer. I would want to say Harley, if not for the fact that Harley was already mentioned. Okay, you're way off. Base. Is, it, is it just Sharp? It's Quincy Sharp, yeah. Hey, that's, that's boring. Hey, yeah. well done. That's boring and obvious. Yeah. I would have hoped it was somebody better. And this twist kind of got me when I first played the game as a kid. Okay, no, but he was the obvious answer who I didn't want it to be. Oh, okay. Well, it is Quincy Sharp. So um, it's it's gone from the lead guy to the lead guy. Why is that a twist? Well, it's not a twist. It's it's Quincy Sharp is as mad as the he people he's, he's he looking after. He's, he's killing happy. patients. He thinks he's... Yeah. Yeah. Possessed by a ghost. Yeah, he's, he's mad. He's nuts. So if we go back to um uh, the penitentiary where we left him, we see that he's gone, having escaped from the island somehow, and he leaves us one last God, message. He, he doesn't even have faith in his own security systems. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. So uh, he leaves Batman one last message, and it says, My name is Quincy Sharp. The spirit of Amadeus Arkham. You have done well to decipher my story, and I pray it has helped you on your path. I trust that through my writings you will do what is right. I implore you, continue my work. This city needs a savior. And if the player uses their top-notch detective skills, we can find a secret room in Sharp's office. Mm -hmm. A room that shows blueprints for something called Arkham City. An extension of the asylum that goes across the Gotham Bay and takes over a chunk of Gotham City. It's a city prison. So that's fun. And it was approved? Uh, apparently. Oh, approved by Arkham. Approved by Arkham. So so Quincy Sharp probably got these blueprints drawn up and he was like, I love it. Stamp. How, How is he going to get Gotham to approve that? Good question. Um, so he's, ba running, Batman, he's running ba for mayor. Batman right? frowns as he pulls out his checkbook. Um, I don't know if you've noticed in this clip of this little screenshot of Batman, his cape is ripped. Um, as you play through the game, the outfit deteriorates as you get beaten up more and becomes more and more like messed up by the end. It's a, it was I as, as a kid, I was a sucker for that kind of thing. That was yeah, very cool. Part seven: giggling in a corner and bleeding. With Ivy neutralized, it's time to stop Joker once and for all. Over the course of the game, we'll keep running past this entrance to the Asylum's Welcome Center, and as we do, we'll see henchmen outside it painting it, knocking plants and <laughs> yeah. woods over the window. We see the final product at last here, a huge painting of Joker's face, where the I doors, like yeah, the doors are inside his mouth. Uh, henchmen stand outside with signs saying stuff like, Welcome to the party, and Monster Sale. They're wearing little party hats and stuff, yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's um, do you think they're all crazy, or do you think they're being forced to do this? Oh, I think they just are, are part of the, they think this is funny. I think they're, they're not insane, these guys. They're from Blackgate. They're, they're, they just think it's fun. Um, slash, Joker's probably said, you stand out there with your fucking party hat or I'm going to kill your wife. <laughs> you know? Um, so yeah, so one of the henchmen is holding a guest list. And he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. If you're not on the list, you're not coming in. And he starts checking the names. And he's like, okay, uh, let's see here. But Bane, no. Uh, ba, uh, uh, here it is, uh, Batman. He flips the guest list around and we see the word Batman is the only thing written on it. <laughs> <laughs> Inside, Joker sits at the top of a huge throne. It's made up of mannequin parts, rubber tires, human skulls. You had to spoil everything, didn't you? Beating up Bane, feeding Scarecrow to Croc, slapping around Harley, my hobby, by the way, and ruining all of my... Yeah, yeah, I'm quoting everything here is verbatim. And ruining all of my lovely venom plants. It's over, Joker, Batman says. Over? Why, my dear delusional Dark Knight, it's only just begun. But first... You That's so romantic. Mm -hmm. His Dark Knight. Well, he's, look, he's, he set up a party for him and everything. Yeah. This is like, this is why when you were like, oh, it's all one massive proposal... I was giggling, because, like, that's what this is. It's one big party for Batman. Um, so, yeah, so he's like... Yeah. They're cute. I ship it. OTP. Well, he's like, well, you deserve a prize. He pulls a lever... And Jim Gordon, tied up, drops from the ceiling on a giant rope. God damn it, Jim. I know. He was back in Gotham and everything. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, clearly, I know, the boat got hijacked. Go Joker's like, your old pal, Commissioner Gordon. Hmm. Oh, well, he is looking a little run down, isn't he? Let's pep him up. Joker pulls a plastic purple and green tranquilizer out of his pocket and takes aim at Jim, preparing to shoot him with the Titan formula. Batman acts on instinct. He leaps in front of Jim and <gasps> the Titan hits him square in the chest. Oh, no. Bats hits the ground and writhes in pain. The Titan courses through his veins. What are you doing? Joker leers, ste stepping over him. You're resisting the change? <laughs> well, that's not fair! And he kicks Batman in the side of the head. But it doesn't work. We're still holding back the transformation. 
So, you want to play hardball, do you? Your call! Joker reaches into his pocket and pulls out a goddamn feather and he starts tickling Batman with it. <laughs> uh, but Batman, like, shoves him back. Uh, and Joker eventually is like, Oh, you're ruining my night! Months of planning! Down the crapper! I just wanted to bring down your grim facade and for once let you see the world as I see it. <laughs> Giggling in a corner and bleeding. But you've denied me even that! He raises the tranquilizer to his head and says, I have nothing to live for. He pulls the trigger and flies back. His eyes start to shine a luminescent green. That feels quite nihilistic for the Joker. He's like, I don't give a shit. You know, just, it's all one big joke. The Joker is kind of nihilistic in the sense that I, I think he often thinks that nothing matters. Mm. Would he not want to continue the joke, though? Well, I will t- I'll give you this, right? So the Arkham games, um, they've all had a uh, tie-in comics and stuff with them. And when you read the, t- the comics, um, yeah, there's ones there, Arkham City, Arkham Knight are up there. When you uh, you get some of Joker's inner monologue, where, you, where I mean, one of them in the Arkham City one, it's one of my favourite bits, uh, he, he thinks about, like, if he was going to die, how would he want to die? And he describes his perfect scenario. And the scenario is Gotham on fire, him and, with Batman. Batman is the one to kill him. Um, and, and like, but yeah, Gotham on fire, Batman's the one to kill him. And he goes out almost like in a blaze of glory, forcing Batman to kind of like break his one rule. That's how he wants to die. But holy tension in Creature Batman, we got away to a news chopper circling the island and hear the voice of Jack Ryder who you might remember is Gotham's number two news reporter. <laughs> not um, for long. Not for long. Wait, who's the number one? Vicky Vale. Vicky oh. Vale. Who Batman's, is Batman. Batman's sometimes ex, yeah. yeah. So Jack Ryder is reporting to the people of Gotham in this news chopper overhead, and he's like, Arkham Asylum is on lockdown. The inmates, inmates have broken out, and just moments ago, we received this taped message. A message from Joker plays out. Greetings, Gotham! Arkham is mine! Soon, I'll unleash madness untold onto the streets of Gotham, but first, direct your eyes to the rooftops and witness the final destruction of your dear dark Why night. would the news show this? I don't know. I don't know, but again, Joker's probably got the guy's family hostage. He's, he's maniacal, he's a baddie. Um, so, yes, we finally see him. And yes, Chase, this is the image you've seen before. Titan Joker. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. It looks really bad. Yeah, it does look really bad. This is not a great ending. Um, he's a hulking mass standing at about 10 feet tall. And he has a mohawk. Why does he have a mohawk? Yeah, he's got a mohawk. His hair stands in a slick green mohawk. The bones are creaking and stretching out of his back. He's minging. His fingernails are sharp daggers stretching on. Packing, though. He is packing. He's holding a dazed Batman in one of his massive hands. Is that a batarang in your pocket, Joker? Are you just happy to see me? (laughs) He looks, Joker looks at the news chopper with Jack Ryder in and he goes, Showtime, Batman! And I want to point out that he's still got that, like, that that high-pitched Mark Hamill voice, even though he looks like this and it sounds weird coming out of him. It does. He's not got, like, a Showtime, Batman! So is Batman still just resisting the change? The whole time, Batman is kind of dazed and confused trying to stop himself from turning. Has Batman forgotten that he has the antidote in his pocket? No. No, you can just stop a chemical reaction if you really think about it. Joker says... He's got willpower. Yeah. Joker says, Showtime, Batman. Let's give the rubes something to talk about. Two freaks fighting to the death. Come on, change. Never, Batman growls and injects himself with the Titan Antidote. You wasted the antidote on yourself, Joker laughs. Now that's funny, hysterical, but you spoiled my fun. And for that, I'll paint Arkham with your blood. Cue a cataclysmically garbage boss fight between Batman and Titan Joker. Uh, you don't even fight Joker. You fight his henchmen while he just kind of like monologues. Oh, yeah. It's crap. Oh, um, yeah. But what? when it's all done, um, the fight happens, I've written. And in the end, it just it's just Bats and Joker standing on the Arkham rooftops. You can't beat me, Bats. I've actually won this time. Ready for the next round? Always, Batman says, subtly spraying explosive gel on his knuckles. Oh. In the shape of a bat. In the shape of a bat. (laughs) I'll never let you win, Batman says. The bat and the clown throw themselves at each other, fists raised. Bats crunches his fist into Joker's face, activates the explosive gel, and knocks him out. He's given more Green Goblin than Joker. Uh, agreed, yes. Yes, very ultimate comics Green Goblin here. Batman and Bruce, Batman cuts Jim Gordon down. Uh, Jim Gordon was like hung up and Joker was like, he's the referee for the fight and stuff. <laughs> it, it, yeah, so we cut him down, he's fine. Uh, and we round out our story. 
We hear Jim Gordon speaking to Barbara over the comms, reassuring her that she's okay, that he's okay. We see Joker returning to his normal self, but coughing up blood. It seems like Titan has taken a real toll on his body. Wait, how did he get cured? Good question. Does getting beat up also cure you? Apparently. I see. Um, but it does seem like whatever it is is still in his system. And he's but maybe it's up. a temporary thing. You don't get temporary forever. transformation. Yeah. yeah. Do you think that Bruce Wayne will pay for his dental? Like insurance? Probably insurance? not. <laughs> nah. um, we see Arkham Security. Do you think villains have insurance? Fuck's sake. We're on the <laughs> three lines to the end. <laughs> We see Arkham Security and the GCPD regaining control of the asylum and locking away the inmates. Doctors treat the injured, working on ways to treat the Batman Titans. sent him flowers, though. <laughs> but without the venom plants, an antidote to Titan is a while really away. Sweet. He feels bad about what he did. On the dock of the island, Batman meets Jim Gordon. Shame about your car, Jim says. Can I give you a ride? Remember, his car's now in the bay with Bane. So Jim is like, can I give you a ride? And Batman goes, thanks, Jim, but I have one on the way. Suddenly, we hear the crackle of the police radio. An APB has been put out on Harvey Dent, a.k.a. Two-Face. He's robbing a bank. Oh, no. The Batwing, Batman's plane, swoops in. Bats grapples up to it, leaps behind the controls, and flies off into another adventure. The credits roll. post credit scene. Do you think he ever hears things like that? He's like, ah, oh, police can handle it. No. I don't think he does. He's Batman. <laughs> he never lets the police handle it. He's Batman. post credit scene. We see the water of the Gotham Bay lap quietly against the cliffs of Arkham Asylum. We see a crate of Titan. And we see... Scarecrow's hand burst out of the water. Oh, so is Titan going to be a through line for the entire series? Maybe. Oh, okay. Not, don't, don't get disappointed by that because I will say it is not like the through line, but it is an important plot point that will pop up a couple of times. Yes. And it's the credits rolled. It's more confirmation that Scarecrow didn't die. That's mainly what that is. Um, because I, I really didn't Your do favorite. it justice. It kind of seems like Croc almost tears him in half as they're going into the water, but it's confirmation that he's all right and he survived it. Um, but yeah, credits roll. Nice. What did you think? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you had fun with it? I'm curious. I'm interested for more. Oh, you're actually. I want more tidbits. Oh, I'm really glad. But I will say, only 0.8% cum, not enough. <laughs> I'll be honest, that was more cum than I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, cool. Uh, what was it like reliving it, Neil? Um, it's an interesting one because in my head I thought I remembered a hundred percent of it, and while I did remember all the big beats, it's probably the one I've gone back to least. Mm. I think City I've probably played inside out. City's um, my favorite game out of all. Of yeah, I, I, but it is. It's really well done. It's quite tight. It's, uh, it obviously we we could bore everyone with the criticisms about that, but we've made enough jokes about you know Batman's culpability and yeah. apparent not reflecting on that in any way but hey I, I i think it's an amazing game i think that yeah you covered it really well and i had a giggle <sighs> did, did I, any issues with the plot holes chase because there there are obvious plot holes here you know like ivy isn't cured somehow t joker reverts back to his former self despite the fact he's not been injected with the antidote eh. does it matter to you do you care eh, not really no, i'm i'm mainly i'm mainly currently just That's in the headspace want. of if not for that final scene which is very sequel baity, and I hate sequel baiting, so I'm not a massive fan of it. What do you mean the scarecrow thing? Yes. Just, that's just post credits, just a teaser. I'm sorry if you show that there is Titan still around. That's sequel baiting. Uh, yeah, post credit scene can sequel bait though. I don't think anything else here sequel baits. No, but a post credit scene to sequel bait without a game being confirmed. I hate that. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Okay. Um, but really, as far as we know, the city's now like, oh, Arkham's gone to shit. Why would they ever elect him as mayor so he can build his Arkham City? That's a very good question. Well, I will point... That's a very Are good question because... Elect a mayor? The fact that Sharp is mad and has been killing patients, there is one person who knows that and currently he's off to stop a bank robbery in his bat, bat plane. Um, who's to say that Batman will ever... And he's probably going to invest in the building of Arkham City, isn't he? You'll find probably. out. You'll find out what Bruce Wayne's up to uh, next time. So, yes, uh, here's... Do we get more Bruce Wayne in the future ones? Uh, yes, we do. Oh, good. Uh, so here's a little teaser for what you're in for next. No way. Yeah, how the hell would Batman be able to get into the museum? That place is locked down tighter than my mother on prom night. What the hell does that mean? You don't want to know. Yeah, I do. Heh, <laughs> me too. We've got more important things to be dealing with, like what are we going to do if Batman's taken down the Penguin? Maybe we could go see your mother. What's your favorite part of that tease? Holy cum doll, Batman! <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, we're just ending there. Bye-bye. <laughs>